What is up, everybody? And welcome to Defend Your Units with my co-host, Cody, from Blood Money MMA Bets. How's it going, Cody? Uh, did you enjoy last week's card and all the shenanigans? Are you happy that we didn't go to that card? Because I feel like oh we were just God, left, bro. like literally left been, to go home right after that card live. I would have been so mad. Um, <laughs> the referee's ridiculous. Like the one referee. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, because I mean, when you're you're stopping, like if somebody gets poked in the eye, right, and then like they should. The ref should stop because you're three foot away, right? So you should see that the dude got poked in the eye. That's your job. You and think. then you should stop the fight and be like, all right, hold on. Let's check it out. But if you just go in and let the dude punch him in the face and wave it off, that should be the same as like when Nicholas Mota was getting choked by Ogden and the ref didn't do his job right because the ref and them didn't do their job right. You should stop it and um, let them check their eyes and stuff. But And then stop. I mean, dude, uh, I picked – Kyle Nelson to win and all that, but like Bill Algio wasn't done in that fight. Like he, he was getting, he was getting his butt whooped, but like he he wasn't like done. Now, granted, he could have took another big shot and went down, but it's Bill Algio, man. That dude's been rocked a ton of times and, and came back. So yeah, that was early. Um don't the, forget the Weidman. The, the Weidman the eye pokes was wild. The Dumas eye poke. That uh, was wild. The Luke pulling guard and just giving up in a way that was wild yeah he quit um <laughs> jamal <laughs> emmers trying to junkyard dog a junkyard dog dude whoa worst fight iq ever um, there were so many like interesting fights whether it was fighter related ref related judging related that other judge our ref too um oh the cheaty fight the, one judge gave reese yeah. a, like a 29 28, 28. and Where? he didn't do anything he didn't <laughs> so um terrible dude i've seen you made a post on twitter like these live cards man we we forget about like we wanted to go around the country but then we forget how bad remember like Je texas judging and like yep. all the judging everywhere like it makes you kind of kind of yeah well that's the thing like the you back. get these refs that you don't really see maybe they're not as like you yeah. know polished as mark and smith and chris tyone and also you have these refs or judges i'm sorry that don't really judge as much as the people from the apex yeah we see sal de amato all the time and chris lee and whoever the other people are but like th they're consistent and at least we know what we're getting out of them which can be inconsistent sometimes but when you go outside it's like whoa we forget like yeah the apex sucks but if we're betting on it it's more consistent we're used to it and then we see this other crap and we're like this is freaking insane so i just like the good refs the yeah. Apex, man, they, they got the good refs because they do. I mean, they, like they mess up from time to time, but it seems like it's, I mean, it's usually the judging problem, but dude, the refs, like I, like I said, if I would have had an Algeo bet, dude, I, he was getting his butt whooped, but like, I would have been pissed, man, because that's, yeah. that's, and the ref should know too. And that's why it's not a normal ref. Cause a normal ref that's ref, like three, four or fucking Algeo's fights, or at least seen him fight four times. No, this dude's a, a savage. He's a junkyard dog. He's gonna take yep. like why didn't they jump in and stop it for Landwar? He was still standing when he True. was hurt. You know what Good I mean? Question. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. Um, yeah, it was wild. It wild was card, just one dude. of those one of those cards where you just gotta like throw it away and don't forget it. But I'm salty still. I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna talk a little bit about it. all the flavors that. that we can choose. I'm gonna choose salty salt. salt hell from that and we're coming um, to this card for ufc vegas 90 which i don't know what you not much say. better i'll be honest this is probably the least confident card betting wise and picks that so far this year like really? by far with all the last like five yes by far cards. and i'm just talking straight on paper picking sides like i'm just like it's all the junkyard you, it's all the dogs anyone, man if you, you watch my video dog on this card, you're that, you know, money. honestly, I was just going to literally say something like this. Like, I'm literally probably going to like bet like three more dogs, even though I picked like there's a couple dogs I'm probably going to bet. And I didn't even pick them because I do think it's that close. And the value is just all on that side. And I'm just like, I don't even know what to do with this card. Like, I don't like it. I, I just don't like it. But I already dogs. got one dog. So I got two more in mind. Dude, and fucking UFC 300. Oh, yeah. Dog City, dude. It's crazy. All these, and then it sucks Wait. when you're losing. You know what I mean? You lost a couple weeks and you come out like, I'm betting all these dogs. I ain't chasing nothing. It's just, yeah, it's just, it is what it is. I'm, I'm only going to probably have like five bets this, this card. So nothing crazy. 
all yeah. low units, nothing like I'm not smashing any lines or anything. No, just yeah. okay. The one freaking bet I did smash, it's called off already. So there it is. <laughs> oh, no. okay. yeah. Over at well, uh, Hugo. Yep. But let's get to the chat. When we'll get going. We got 30 people in here. We got Anakin. What's up, man? Said, let's go. PJM, what's up, man? Game time. There will be blood. Appreciate you coming out. Let's fucking go. Johnny K and blood from Ryan. Always a great time. Appreciate you coming out. We got Mushroom. Always a great time as well. Coming in here. Yo. Hanging out with us, Mushroom. Appreciate you. I hear I heard that you got kicked out yeah. of uh, Atlantic City there. Yeah, top flight <laughs> security got him. He said, he said he's running around. <laughs> I wish I could have seen that. Oh, man. That's good times. Let's see. We got Jumbo Loco, our guy. Uh, what's up, everyone? Going all in this week. Let's go. Mush or Dixon Cider Mushroom. What did you do at the boardwalk? There we go. Yes. Uh, Anakin has Alan by decision. I don't mind that. They had just they had mushroom on a bolo, be on the lookout, and he's just walking around with pictures looking for mushrooms. We, get, we got Paku and man here. What's up, man? Sure, sure, all sure. Let's Paku, see. What let's up? see. Yeah, well, there will be blood said judges were F and Gato would have won. I had a Gato bet as well, and that but probably would have lost because I had her in the parlay. I don't even remember who I had her with, but what was this more uh, staff booty staff? Yeah, I'm sure it was. So she wasn't gonna win that fight, uh, due to Kova. I know it. I just I know it in my heart of hearts. Either. That's why. That's why when she's like, "I'm out. I got the. I got the shit or something." It would have sucked <laughs> if she'd have came in super improved from because she's only like 22. Beat the shit out of Gatto. No, Dixon Sider with the only yeah. fans fades. Yo, you ain't lying. Norma Dumont, Charlie Campbell, great. Fantastic. So that P -T -R, uh, I'm just gonna fade. I'm just gonna fade all of them because I picked all of those guys. So I'm just gonna fade them all. How about that? I pick. <laughs> I pick Chepe out of them three. Well, Norma's gonna catch a beating. If she ain't fighting Chelsea Chandler. Maybe maybe in one round, the first one. You know the only girl to beat Jermaine Duran to me in the last twelve years. She's got two losses. Amanda Nunes. Other than cool, she, cool. She but that was eight through, years ago. Cody throws beatings to Iron Ladies. At Savage. come on man come on man <laughs> 300 next week we got free bobby oh, what's up let's fucking go, go. bo is gonna destroy okay. bumbage oh yeah dude i got this nice face meat fist oh sweatshirt on yeah, all I, got stuff. A, I got a nice little face meets fist shirt as well oh yeah yeah i like it oh you got that in the freaking long of the stuff what i got the order sleeve yeah huh? that's pretty sweet pretty sweet bro i'm gonna fight bert even though he's tough you're a fight tough little kid now, man. Yeah, man. He got he actually got me on that shit. I just woke up, I was scrolling through Instagram, and I thought Shop oh, got like blog. Dude, I get to see Shop got fight. That I, I said I would have shit my pants. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been did. messaging you all day. <laughs> Good one, Bert. Bert got me. Bert MMA. Shout out Bert MMA. I don't Bert. think he's doing breakdowns yet, is he? I don't know. But I know he does. He puts stuff on Instagram, but he's doing fighting, boxing, MMA, all that. So uh Shout out Bird MMA. That kid's smart as shit. When if he ever comes back to this, he's really good at this. Yep. And he's not 14, so he'd probably be even better, you know? True. Yeah. Uh Pink Freud said, gentleman narrative is Dorma doesn't make weight. She will. She looks good on IG. She also looks, looks being good. good on IG, though. She always looks there good you on go. IG, though. Think about that. All right, we'll get to the first fight here, which is gonna be Melissa Mullins versus Nora. Cornhole. <laughs> cornhole, 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 and the great Cornolio. Yes, who do you like here, dude? This line's crazy off, like crazy off. Like this, like it is. She's mine is like three fifty. Melissa Mullins is like good. She's got pretty decent striking, you know, like a, a nice jab, nice overhand right. Um, I think her line is based off what it is, based off that she's going to be able to just out grapple this girl very easily and beat her up at minus three fifty because Nora Cornell is like. Mm -hmm. Not high level, but pretty high level, like Muay Thai girl. Like she's been fighting Muay Thai for a long, long time. That's why she's what 34, just getting into the UFC, but she's got a, a bunch of uh Muay Thai background experience. In her last fight, she was able to um beat Jocelyn Edwards in a very close fight, but she was taken down a couple times. Um, but her striking's good. Melissa Mullins can get beat up a little bit on the feet, but she's super durable. You've seen that in her Daria fight um, where she took a beating and then was able to get the takedown. So I'm going to lean Melissa Mullins in this because of the, the grappling, excuse me, advantage, chugging that coat, but um, <laughs> because of the grappling advantage and because I've seen Jocelyn Edwards land a couple takedowns, but like 
this line's off because if Melissa Mullins can't just land because she's not like like she's like 32 two or something, but it's not like she's some high level wrestler uh, or something like that background. Like she's just got pretty good grappling herself. So if she can't get this fight to the ground for some reason, like I think Cornell beats her up standing. I think she wins the standing fight, but um, I do think Melissa Mullins can get it to the ground. And when she gets at the ground, she's, she's not Jocelyn Edwards. She's pretty nasty. You know, she's trying to ground and pound you out, take your back. She's got good back takes. So um, she could easily eat up two rounds too, and then just survive if she would get tired or something in the third. So give me Melissa Mullins, Melissa Dixon, but um, that line is crazy. Like that line's crazy. So, yeah. Yeah. I agree with everything you said. Um, Even with the line. Um, I do like Mullins to win though. I you like on the feet. I would give Nora a slight edge, but Mullins is pretty hittable. We've seen her get rocked in her last fight too, but she did show, you know, recoverability. She got back up and she got the win. But um, we've also seen Nora get taken down way too much with Jocelyn Edwards, and that's not a good look either because Mullins can take you down and uh, get you out of there too. So I'm just going to go with Mullins. I mean, she might get rocked here on the feet, but uh, I do think she'll get those takedowns. And um, I actually kind of like the under two and a half, and I know it's like plus 200 range or so. Um, Both fighters, I mean, they have finishes in their – career they're both under 10 fights and i think melissa can get rocked in the feet and i think nora can get pounded out or ground pound or even submitted on the ground so i like the under here kind of at a plus 200 if you want to take a little stab at something but i'm not going to touch a money line here i'm not putting melissa mullins in a parlay after what i saw from her and i'm not going to go the dog route with Nora after what I saw from her too. Cause she did not beat Jocelyn Edwards in that fight. I'm sorry. So give me Mullins to win. And I will say by like a second or third round, uh, I'm going to say knockout on ground and pound. Why not? I think it's going to happen. Uh, Pink says Nora's striking distance striking isn't technical for MMA. She's good in the clinch, but no way Dixon doesn't take her down and smash agreed. Yeah. That's- Blood, you betting female women's MMA? Well, you had hey. to. You showed it. You showed it. Hey, listen, I, I'm not going to pass up. I passed up money last week. But I'm um, going to do it, Pink. I, yeah, I'm not passing. Like, when I see Cynthia Calvillo at plus 175, do it against Piero Rodriguez. Like, I have to take that. That's craziness. Like, the, there's not. What, you know, like, what if you see um, Piero Rodriguez at minus 125 right now? She's not that good. Like she's not that good. You think Cynthia? We'll get we'll get there. How about that? Cynthia, Cynthia beat your girl Loopy. I told you about fucking burn a Jandaroba last week, too. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I can't stop myself from making money. I don't want to bet these even fights or something or take these big favorites. But dude, when I see Jandaroba at plus 175 and I pass that up, that eats at my heart. My my Patreon knows what really eats at my heart. That's why I ain't betting online no more either. I hate betting online. Betting online, like I said, online is the devil. Having that shit in your pocket. You want to know a fun fact about last week? Yeah, go ahead. You don't know why I'm betting online, dude. I've been ever since I met, I started betting online four weeks ago, full time. I ain't done nothing but make mistakes. You second guess yourself. You got these lines changing. So when I go to the casino before, what I do, I put in five bets, right? I'll bring them home, put them in my spot. Uh, I go back to the casino whenever if I need to make a bet, but I'm not going back to the change much ever. You know, I don't ever hedge out. You know what I did this weekend? I hedged out of a bet in, in my Patreon. You know what bet I hedged out of? Kyle Nelson. Kyle Nelson plus 180. Yep. And, but I put in a winning bet. I put in the Jeff Neal over, but it, like I'd already had my dogs in and stuff, but like that's how bad. My stupid stuff spent. So yeah, I had a bet on uh, Kyle Nelson. I mean, the people in my Patreon still bet him. Like I had him even burn on my on my top ten bets. I had burn in there, but like I said, um, I don't want to be betting these big favorites and throwing big favorite girls on parlays and stuff like that. But if I can see a girl that I think's got clear path to victory, you know, a big plus money. But I don't see a clear path to victory for Nora here. If she had some uh, takedown defense, I would see it, but. Yeah, there's no, there's really no clear path to victory for either one. I mean, they have their path, but it's just, are they going to do it? They're so inexperienced. They have under 10 fights. It's one thing that I like to look at. If they're under 10 fights in their pro career, you might want to stay away or bet very small things on them. Like, because that's why I said I kind of like the under two and a half in this one, because I can see Nora touch up Mullins on the feet and I can see 
a Mullins touch up Nora on the mat. So, and it's probably going to be one way or another. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll go to the next one here. How about that? Uh, Dylan Budka versus Cesar Alameda. I will go first. So Budka making his UFC debut. It's somewhat short notice. He's a good wrestler, good grappler. He's got good takedowns. Striking is just, you know, okay. Um, Almeida, though, making his UFC debut finally. Very good kickboxer, accomplished. He's fought, you know, Pereira a few times, I believe. I think he beat him maybe once, right? I think it's once. Um, but he's got power on the feet. His takedown defense, what's that? What's that mean? Song for uh, <laughs> Daz. Or, uh, oh, okay. They're, they're uh, what is it? Uh, Glenbot. I don't know why. Oh, writing down your bets before you. Okay. I, yeah. Dude, I write them down 50 times. Dude. It's the whole point of going to the casino. Like, I'll write down all my bets and then get to think about them throughout the week. You see the lines moving, you do this and that. But when I'm betting online, I do my tape study. It's just like I told myself I would do. Is like I'm having my five bets by the end of the night. They're put in. And, like, it just – I like that extra time to think about stuff and mm-hmm. let it marinate a little bit. I feel you. Know, That's what I've been doing, too, but it hasn't really been working out too well. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, dude, you should drive the casino too. You got a casino about the same same length. Yeah, it's change. too far away for me. Uh, Almeida, though, nice like style. I said, uh, good kickboxer, good on the feet, good volume. He's dangerous early. Um, he did go to decision once. He only has four fights and pro MMA fights, if you want to say, but he has a ton of kickboxing fights. Um, yeah, it's a striker versus wrestler, but I'm just gonna go the striker because both guys, like I said, they're both making their UFC debut. It could be a little bit of a crazy fight in a small cage. I think Almeida's going to be able to catch him going by knockout. Like I said, this, I'm not super confident in this pick either. Uh, who was he supposed to fight? Because I was way more confident um, in that one. <laughs> well, he was supposed to fight Duncan before. Um, Christian Leroy Duncan. But this last time, he was oh. supposed to fight somebody else, too. Okay. And, uh, yeah. The, but, but let, let me look up on, real quick. Uh, I forgot. It was... Um, Josh Fremd. Josh Fremd. Oh, I would have picked Almeida all day for sure. Yeah. But this one, I'm just like, because I do think Budka is a better wrestler than Josh Fremd. And Josh Fremd beat up Budka. But I'm just saying, this is what I'm scared about for this fight, not that fight. <laughs> right. Right. So give me Almeida. I'm just going to say knockout first round. Let's go. Yeah, I like Almeida. Um, I think that he can win this fight a lot of different ways. Um, Butka, he, he's he got, like, decent wrestling. He's still young, but he hasn't really fought anybody good ever. And then he, he's fought one Russian dude. But um, he's still young, but he's got decent wrestling. But he's not dangerous. He's not dangerous standing on the ground. He doesn't do that much damage, and that's even to lower-level dudes. And um, he's just trying to grapple, grapple, grapple. And from what we've seen recently, even if he grapples Caesar Almeida for three and a half minutes up against Cage, lands a takedown, he gets back up. If Almeida pieces him up, hits him with a good knee, you know, a couple big shots, he's going to win that round. So I think he can win a decision. He showed on the contender series that he had good takedown defense because that dude he fought on the contender series was a big dude. He was athletic. He seemed like he had pretty decent wrestling and pretty decent jujitsu, and he had good striking too. And he didn't want to strike with Almeida at all, so he gassed himself out trying to take him down. And Almeida showed a good takedown defense. He did get taken down a couple times, but he got back up. He showed good cardio. Um, Like you said, kickboxing background, not only does he got to win over Pereira, but he's been fighting as recently as like a couple years ago. And uh, the one dude, the Weiss dude that he fought, I think his name's like Donovan Weiss or something like that. Um, He's like the best kickboxer in the world right now. That dude is a savage. And he was going to split decisions in uh, majorities and stuff with that dude recently. Um, He got unanimous about a year ago by that dude. But that Donovan Weiss, that, or I'm probably not saying the last name right, we say or something, but uh, that dude's a savage. But yeah, man, I like uh, I like Caesar Almeida a lot here as a dog. Could have bet him at plus one forty. Um, he's still about one plus one thirty. Yes, I, I he was one of he was one of the, was one, of the one one of the dogs where I'm just like, eh, whatever, whatever happens. <laughs> because yeah. like all of my like low confidence picks, if you want to say, I feel like those are hitting more so than like my high confidence picks. It's crazy. So, yeah, I'm just gonna just... give it a shot. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Like I said, this card is so weird for me. I'm just gonna probably just throw some darts and hopefully. I don't think Buck is that good. I think he's. Taking I don't think he's good either. It's just the wrestling. Can he get it yeah, going? Yeah. 
can he survive? Like he is taking this fight kind of on short notice. So if he gets the first two rounds, like is he going to be able to survive in the third? It just, there's just a little bit of question marks from every side. So that's why I'm like a little hesitant, but yeah. For show. Bo show. Dirty Reg, oh. what's up, man? No need to bet every fight. Just watch this crap shoot. I agree. Any action, Effie's in the house betting hockey as he always does. He yeah. writes it down. I think the odds should be. And then when they're way off in the books, I bet those games. There you go. That's caught cap. I love it. That's how you do it. Like, you know what I mean? And then the, the more, then the more you think it's off, the more you should bet, honestly. But I mean, yeah. sometimes that's why you'll get a max bet. Like certain fights, it won't make sense. But to me, if the line seems that off, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm riding with Effie tonight. I think I got the Canucks, right? Is that yes, movie? sir? Canucks versus uh spoiler. I did as well. <laughs> Where'd you get him at? Plus minus one forty, minus one forty five. Oh, uh, like one forty five, yeah. I just threw a little bit on there because I got my some of my money. Pressure's on, on Effie. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I can't wait. I'm getting all I got some bets, all these bets, and I got one bet for three hundred online, and all the rest of my stuff's gonna be paper tickets from here on out. There you go. Bet slam with Sam. What's up, man? So what's up, gentlemen? Ooh. It's that time of the week again. Yes, sir. We're on the second fight, so we're not too too much. Uh, we didn't come in too late. Uh, keep going back and forth in this fight, but like the over one and a half in this fight. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. If he gets that wrestling going, he needs to, because on the feet, I don't know if it's going to last a round and a half. I could, uh, yeah, I could see that, though. I try to uh, just pick my confidence spots, and then I have to add props and all that kind of crap. Yep. Yeah, because it's like fun to gamble, but really you just want to bet. You just want to be in this to make money. Like that's like I want to bet every fight. I'll have my five bet. That's why I love it. Like I said, I got my bets there. I lose, I lose, whatever, but I'm not chasing nothing, not doing nothing. Like mm-hmm. I can't wait to get off all my I mean, not that I'm doing <laughs> that, but like I I just makes the system better. Even just driving there, that last like if I'm coming from a house like that last hour. Of just driving to the casino that's when i'm really thinking about the bets you know because i might have three if i need two or what one two bets left you know i might be thinking out of the last five bets and like put some time into it yeah but on your phone you're just like what you're like you have one thought in your head you're like wait a minute remember you checked that kick that one time and then you want to better some <laughs> fuck that. I don't want it. uh both guys have uh had trash competition in mma but almeida is a high level kickboxer with experience and he won't feel the pressure of winning the agreed that's yeah. that, that's what I like, and that's why I went with it. So that's just yo, yeah. yo. We got sticky does MMA. Yo. What's up, man? What's up, Almeida? He's on Almeida as well. So that, there you go. Everyone's like on Almeida. It. I like it. Good dog. Almeida submission. Just can't. he has to be like five thousand at least. He was showing decent jujitsu though on the contender because that dude he fought on the contender series wasn't bad. Like wasn't bad at all. Yeah. Uh, Anthony is in here. What's up, man? He said Buka being. 24 with flashes of actual talent. I, I think we see improvement. He's improved fight to fight. Okay. He is young. Yeah, but I don't 24, see like but his striking, he doesn't want to strike someone at all. like him though. Yeah, exactly. And then, then he doesn't want to like, even when he grapples, he's not doing like a ton of damage. We'll see though. I mean, 24 and improving is definitely, that's a fact. Yep. Raw torque says word up. What's up, man? We got Jade Ooh. in the house. Almeida, Ooh. the play of the card. There we go. I like it, Jaden. I like Watch it. I'm saying smash the like button if you didn't. We have 125 people in here, so definitely smash the like button. Don't make uh, follow mushrooms. us on Twitter. All you that don't good smash stuff. the like button. Mushrooms gonna come smoke a cigarette in your living room. Yeah, then you'll kick him out. <laughs> you can't find him. <laughs> He's like the wind, dude. He's God. He's everywhere, He's nowhere. Got 130 MMA. Good to see you guys. Yo. Appreciate you coming out, Tyler. As always. Uh, MMA big dog. Do we know if anyone just had a kid? Yes, please put that in the chat because it's real. Kyle Nelson just had a kid and he won, so it's yeah, real. So guys. did Nate like, Landwer. The recently though, like within like a few months at least. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't like, know that. In the last couple of weeks or something, I thought they said. Shit, it's. I'm telling you, it's like the opposite for women though. If they just had a kid, fade that crap, fade it, all day. <clears throat> Johnny, that's been so true lately. I had that with Manon. Kid? Or... <laughs> I'm joking. Manon's beast, man. Yep, yep, yep. All right, we're moving up to the next one here, which is going to be Gene or Jean Masumoto versus Dan Argueta. I'll let you start this one off. Yeah, um, this should be a good fight. Uh, Masumoto is uh, he's good. This kid's freaking good, man. Um, supposedly, I mean, not supposedly, I'm sure it ain't a lie, but he's been training since he was like four for this crap. 
uh, really good striking like Muay Thai. You know, he has really good straight punches that he'll throw like three to five punch combo. And then he's ending with a hard leg kick. He can start with a hard leg kick. He's got really good leg kicks. I think that'll help him a lot in this fight. Um, pretty good takedown defense. I did see in one fight, he got taken down by a Brazilian dude that was like seven and one. He was a little bit bigger than him, but uh, he took him down and got a little bit of control time on him. But then, I mean, he ended up coming back and finishing that dude. But um, he's good. This kid's good, man. He's got good takedown defense. He's got he's a black belt in jujitsu. He's got jujitsu. He's got good striking. He's definitely gonna have way better striking here. Um, and I, I mean, Dan Argueta, he's got decent striking. It's not terrible, you know. He'll he'll keep coming forward, but he's wanting to throw a lot of punches, get you striking with him, so he can duck under, take you down. And then he's got really good jujitsu on the ground. Um, you see, against like Nick Aguilera, he showed good jujitsu, even decent against Damon Jackson, like kind of like surviving and stuff like that. But against Ronnie Lawrence, he showed that if you know what I mean, if, if the only thing you can do is wrestle, he can definitely take you out easy. But in this fight, I got to go with Masamoto, man. I think he's got the takedown defense to keep this fight standing. Um, he's got the cardio, and even if he gets taken down, he can stay safe, get back up. But he's got the cardio to keep going, man. And um, I think he's going to land the the more damage on the feet. I don't. I just can't see Argueta. Like Argueta's got decent wrestling and, and and that, but like I just can't see him taking this dude kid down and just holding him down for three rounds or even taking him down and subbing him. So I think when they're on the feet, this kid's going to do a lot more damage, and um. He can get the win. The only thing like Masamoto, he he's got he's got like six decision wins, but he he's he hits hard. Um, but I, I just don't see it going over. But the crazy the over on this over two and a half is like minus two seventy five or something like that, which is crazy because Argueta could catch him in something or mm -hmm. get caught himself. But I do see both dudes being tough and, and most likely going over. But I, I do like Masamoto here, man. I, I think this kid's good and he he could have a real real bright future. Argueta's good too, but I I mean. If his wrestling doesn't work for all three rounds, he's not. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. I think he will get the wrestling going. So I'm on our ghetto side here. Uh, I mean, Masamoto, I mean, he is good. He's a very good striker. And he does have pretty good uh, wrestling and grappling takedown defense, too. But it's just the style, I think, with this fight, which I'm leaning more so on the Argueta side. Um, he's making his UFC debut uh, also to Masamoto. So that, you know, make it a little bit of jitters and all that good stuff. And Argueta, you know, he's fought good competition like i'm not saying amazing but um he's fought good ufc competition he's stuck in there he's tough as hell um and i like i like the style that he has and that and i think he can he'll you know he could lose the first round but i think maybe as the fight goes on i think he can build something here and maybe uh get those takedowns a little bit easier and maybe masamoto's like damn dude like leave me alone i just want to i don't want to get taken down anymore one of those things where he kind of i don't want to say quits but we've seen it getting taken down you know people get taken down like that after after a round of wrestling and then you're like i don't want to wrestle anymore i'm gonna get taken down and they accept it sort of more so but we'll see what happens he's young so i'm kind of fading the dana white contender series fade here if you want to say so give me argueta to win i'm gonna say by decision but it wouldn't shock me if he gets like a like a late like submission or maybe grounded pound. maybe he catches him on the feet and then he gets like a club and sub or something like that because he does hit hard and, he, and after a while you know matsumoto may be tired and he may you know, brain laps and you might get caught. So who knows? But uh, give me our get to win. Weirdly confident going with it this week. I think he gets it done. How about that? Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got Phil in the house. What's up, Goose MMA? He hey, says, Phil, gents, what up? what's up? Thought I'd jump on. Curtis is the play of the card. Alan like is it. toast. I don't mind I like it. it. I don't like it, it, Phil. You bet. I wish I would have jumped on it immediately when I saw the line. So I plus was like, oh, it was like plus 200 and something. It was crazy when it first came out. I got plus 185. It's still pretty good, though. Oh, that's great. Either way. For that. If he's saying fight? the truth. Oliveira, I don't know if he just had a kid, but I think it, he's having a kid. So I will put that in the same ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> I remember a couple people that's had kids and got stomped. It sucks. I remember like uh, Joe Selecki <laughs> came out. Yeah, that's where he had his kid and <laughs> beat up. I forget which fight that was. Scott, you do you are you are Yo. all facts, my my man. <laughs> I don't want to be the one to tell you, but having a kid may be harder on a woman's body. Than it was is. that's why I told my girl. Let's I didn't have know another that until you just said that. I just I read it like, oh, it makes sense. I told my girl, let's have another kid. She's like, I don't want to. That hurts and all that. I'm like, it didn't hurt me at all. I was like, that was, that was <laughs> yeah, Antoine, that what's up, Antoine? <laughs> said, uh, what's up, Cody? Oh. And I just wanted to slide by and say, wish you happy. You all happy. Oh. Appreciate you coming. Up, uh, Coming on, Antoine. What, what just? No, I, I, I had like a little burp. 
and I was like trying to burp, but it wouldn't. Because <laughs> yeah, it was like cut. I was like, I thought you had a <laughs> mystic connection. <laughs> words. It went down the wrong pipe a little bit, so I was trying to get it out. Sorry. Appreciate you coming out, though. Man. Yes. Uh, hey, guys, can I get your opinion on the blatant intentional eye pokes from Weidman? Um, four too many. <laughs> and after the second one, they got warned. And there was no point deduction or anything. So <laughs> in the, in so the last like, one, though, but like the thing it was is, ridiculous. Is like, so they call it a TKO or whatever. They go to the thing. They come back. They're like, oh, we ended up scoring it because it was after this point or whatever. So they're like, it went to decision. Um, but it's like, it should like Bruno should have won the last round and got a point taken away for getting poked in the eye. So it should have been like a draw. My, Pretty like, much. I I remember thinking I can't remember the first two rounds. And the second grit, round was and second round was close. I yeah. mean, obviously Weidman won the first, but because Bruno didn't want to do anything for whatever reason. But yeah. the second round was close. I, I I don't remember who I even thought won that round. But the third round, I mean, it, you it had to have been a point crazy. deduction, but they didn't even do that. So the Dumas like, one should have been like that. Should have been a, a no contact. Like when you go back, like because you're going back, the ref stopping the fight for a TKO. But when you go back and watch the tape and you see the ref actually missed the eye poke where he should have stopped the fight and then like, hold on, can you see this and that? Instead, he stopped the fight because he missed the eye poke. That's a ref error. That's the same thing as Mota and Trey Ogden. It's a ref error. The ref's in, interjecting themselves in the fight in the wrong way. But um, Because, dude, he got freaking poked in the eyes and then got punched to sleep. You know what I mean? Like that was that was crazy. Who's coming in? And like you should know too, Weidman, like Weidman and that fucking Ruzi, the finger deep in his butt, dude. Um, finger they deep should, in you eyes know and butt. you just fucking poked the shit out of somebody. You know you just poked them. Like he, you know, like come on, dude. You know if you poke somebody in the fucking eye, and then you just go, oh, the ref didn't tell me to stop. And you just well, Weidman definitely knew because that was the fourth time he did it, and he, he even poked said him that. twice within that little fucking sequence. <laughs> and he he even said both- it in his freaking interview. He's like, yeah, Bruno just needs a man up. I mean, that's not what you do when you get eye poked. You're like, he just just said you eye poked him, <laughs> bro. He, he, yeah. So like, I mean. It was crazy. That was close dude. to disqualification too. It because he'd already worn worn Chris <laughs> Weidman so many times and he doubled the him. The very up. least, no contest and or point deduction. Like they didn't do anything. They're like, nope, Weidman wins by KO. Well, we'll switch it decision. How about that? Yeah, okay. No, that's <laughs> dude, that was the craziest card of judging, scoring. Like <laughs> no. that, that mafia stuff's over there is real, man. That is crazy, man. Uh Glenn said, Are you worried about Gina? off his back so listen on that um on that cheaty because I, i'm not really sure how that other betting goes but on that cheaty like reese fight does that not be in a unanimous decision would that mess up a bet in any way like one of the bets you know only like only if you did or whatever they're called or something oh you, yeah would because um reese would win that because like he won or he won a round oh, on a judge's six. scorecard or something. Because like there's got to be some weird reason why some judge. Yeah, Reese like, would have hey, won. Man. Plus he would no Reese way. didn't win thirty seconds of that fight. You know what I mean? He did not win thirty seconds of that. No, fight no, no, uh, no. Cheaty, Cheaty won. Cheaty won that. The plus yeah. the minus three and a half spread. He still would have won that too, or whatever. Yeah. The plus three and a half. But it, so maybe a lot of people had Reese plus three and a half. I don't. I don't know. Cause that was just crazy to me, dude. Like, dude, TD beat the shit out of that kid the whole time. Yeah. What a bat. What's up, man? He said, "What's up, y'all? Ooh. Appreciate you coming out." He likes Argueta plus three and a half. I like that too. Pretty good. Cause I don't think he's gonna finish him. Gene, anyways. Let's put it that way. No, no. Well, Argueta's tough, and Gene's got like six decisions or something. True. His fourteen wins. Maybe and he's eight. young. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll he see. doesn't really hit like that. Like he throws straight combinations and he stays real technical. And that's why he keeps good takedown defense, too. I only seen one dude that really took this kid down. And, and like, because even on the contender series, I think he got taken down by that pretty good wrestler, but he got right back up. Yep. Uh, Turpus said Weidman ran around the whole cage celebrating winning the <laughs> winning by four guy. Box. I know <laughs> it was insane, dude. Him with the Larry Curly Mo, dude. Right? He's like, you know what? I'm not retiring now. I got a KO victory. <laughs> these fingers are strong. He's fucking and he goes, come find me. And he's oh, just he doing that. Oh, okay. So then, yeah, he did. He did. That's what I'm saying, dude. Because yeah, like, I don't know Maybe how that's the why spreads one work. Is like, I got to get those spread. But there's something to it. Because, like, how, the fuck, how can that judge? Uh, the other judges had 30, 27 cheating. You, are they not even looking at this dude? Like, the other judges don't go to their supervisor. Like, did you see what this retard, th- this dude just did? Like, they, and, they, and this dude gets investigated? Never. It doesn't happen. Like, have you ever heard of Sal Diamato or any of these judges getting investigated for a crazy score? Nope. 
just keep it moving. It's just crazy. I hear you. Uh, I drink Miller Lite, but I do drink other beer. I don't just drink Miller Lite. I have whiskey. I drink a whole bunch of other stuff. But Mexican usually for right? live shows, Miller Lite, and then I'll occasional old fashioned there. Yeah, no more old fashions, Johnny. Why? Johnny be getting alive on the old fashions. Yeah. It, it adds a little flavor. Let's put it that way. <laughs> All right, next fight here is gonna be um here we go. Cynthia Calvillo versus Pereira Pereira. I always say Pereira, Piera, Piera Rodriguez. Um, I'll go first since it's my turn. I'm gonna go with the younger fighter here, and I do think this is gonna be a close fight. I'm not saying this is gonna be like you know, Rodriguez 30-27, potential chance for a knockout here. Uh, both girls aren't dangerous at all i do like rodriguez toughness more uh i do think she has more power in her hands but cavillo does throw pretty good volume she does have a little bit of quit in her i will say that but um you know she's solid everywhere she's just not amazing anywhere and that's the same thing for rodriguez but you know i'm just gonna like i said i'm going with the younger fighter here i think she has a little bit more hunger to win this fight especially after losing to jillian robertson the way she lost and i don't know if cavillo's doesn't care to win her or lose. She lost five in a row. I know the last fight against Loopy was super close. This is going to be her second fight at strawweight. She's normally a flyweight. And, um, I mean, it, she's not going to be super big here. I think they're about the same size. So that doesn't, she doesn't really have an advantage or anything. So I'm just going to go with Rodriguez. Like I said, I'm not going to bet this fight. If I would, it would be the overs. Cause I don't think any, both of these girls are dangerous anywhere. But I do worry that if someone's going to quit, it would probably be Cavillo. So <laughs> give me Rodriguez to win by decision. But it's probably going to be a split decision. And Sal Diamato is going to be in there. Has a, has a plus three and a half spread. And he's going to go for it. <laughs> what do you think, Cody? Yeah. um, I think uh, that this is another Augusto Sakai spot right here. Where you're getting an experienced, good, experienced, tough you fighter. You know D1 is coming back. Yeah, yeah, soon and get so, ready. Who's betting them? He, won. he would never get my money. Um, but listen, so you're getting Calvillo, man. Her last five losses, them all five of them would beat the shit out of Piera, right? All five of them girls would yeah, be Piera, especially at 125. Um, she fought Loopy, um, is a year ago now. She threw up 300 strikes because, like, here's what here's here's um. Cynthia Calvillo's career, if you don't know. She's a beast, dude. She was 9-1. and one. She's beaten Jillian Robertson. She fought at 115. And then um, she just started not being able to make weight. So she went up to 125. And it's like when she went up to 125, I think she switched camps or did something. But she would just come in like lazy as hell, dude. Like she – like even sloppy for that. And then she – like her losses, Caitlin Chukake, Jessica Andrade. Andrea Lee. Um, she, she she looked like she wasn't even wanting to fight in the Andrea Lee fight. Like she came in all out, out of shape, but she came back, um, fought Nina Nunez to a split decision, which Nina Nunez ain't bad at all. And then Lupita, she drops down to 115, back down to 115. It seems like she's finally taking her career serious again. Drops down to 115, gets in shape, comes and throws 300 strikes against Lupi, lands the takedown, gets the control time. Um, she's a, actually a really good fighter. Like, go look at her wins, and she's beat like Jessica Hyde, Jillian Robertson, uh, a couple other girls earlier in her career. Pollyanna Botella, Joanne Wood, like and it, and it, Montana De La Rosa. And this is in 2017 when them girls are still young and in their prime too. But um, like I said, it's like she went through a little weird period in her career, but it, she's back to being dedicated. I thought she beat Loopy, dude. She was jabbing Loopy up. Um, she was landing big shots. She threw 300 strikes in that fight. In this fight, I think she has the better striking than Pierre Rodriguez. Pierre, it's not like she's some young prospect. She's like 32 years old, too. She just 31. Yeah, 31. Don't um, worry about that. It's just, it, it's just an age. Yeah, but it, when you when you're 30, 37, though. Yeah, but when you're 31, you still <laughs> haven't fought nobody. The only time you stepped up in competition, you got your ass whooped. That's a bad thing. Like, that was, a was fighting up, title bro. contender type girls at like fucking 27 years you're old. Going from Sam Hughes to Jillian Robertson, that's a huge step. I mean, but it's still fucking Jillian Huge. Robertson. It's still J and she got dominated and beat yeah. up in that fight. Jillian was way better. And I thought she lost to Sam Hughes too. I just rewatched that tape and I thought she lost to Sam Hughes. I thought she lost the first round and the third round. I, but um 
like Pierre Rodriguez, her thing is she's got like decent boxing and movement, but what she really want to do, she really wants to grapple you. Right. And uh, that's what she did on the contender series. That's what she even did against Kay Hansen. That's what she ended up um, getting a couple takedowns on, on uh, Sam Hughes, but she couldn't get no control time. I'll tell you this. She's not out grappling Cynthia Calvillo. Cynthia Calvillo is going to have the better wrestling here. Like you've seen her out wrestle loopy um, in most of her fights, like against Jessica. I, and that that's how she's winning her fights with grappling. So I think that Cynthia Calvillo is going to be a little bit bigger. She's going to have the better striking. She's going to put out way more output. And I think she's going to have the better grappling. So I don't understand where I'm going to pick Piero Rodriguez to win this fight. Like I said, she's not some 24 year old up and coming prospect. Dude. She's uh, going to be 32 this year. So she's in her prime. She, and she still hasn't fought nobody good. Like, I mean, and, and like I said, the one time I see her step up, I thought she lost her last two fights and she was 1-1 with Kay Hansen going into the third round of that fight because I had a bet on her and I thought she was a lot better than she is. And she's just really not. So um, give me Calvillo, man. I think Calvillo clearly wins this fight and starts taking over in the second and third. I think she actually gets some grappling going in this fight too. So, All right. I just want to let you know, Calvillo is only an inch taller and a half an inch of reach. But that experience, bro. Telling you, and that's it. Yeah, maybe she's maybe. going maybe up to one twenty-five fight. That's decent. We'll yeah. see. I, I'm just not touching this fight. Like this fight is. But now Calvillo's like minus or plus one ten or something. She should be the favorite. But Calvillo should be like just you know, but like a, it's like a, a Gusto. That's why I say like Augusto Sakai, Dante Mays, because like Dante Mays is kind of like beating up lower level guys. Augusto Sakai was on a five fight losing streak, but you go see who he's losing to, and it was like top of the line and then you see he's got top of the line wins too like like i said you don't do mma math but cynthia calvillo beat up jillian robertson when they fought but long time ago but different still. different strokes different folks yeah <laughs> <laughs> that calvillo money yeah well i mean i don't blame anybody taking plus 170 150 130 whatever it's I at. I whatever you got it I, like yeah. i said i'm not touching this fight it's going to be a close fight so you'd rather be on the dog side let's put it that way sicky has kabila at plus 170 as well nice. saba what's up man he said it's dog or pass if you want to bet oh, this fight. Go, opinion, if kabila loses to this muppet she should get cut there do you agree yeah. with that cody that's six yeah. in a row She's fighting. Yeah, she's probably something. making pretty good money too for these fights because she's a super vet. So, um, yep. yeah, man, uh, you got to be able to be, like I said, I think people are kind of think that like uh, Pierre is this big up and coming prospect. But like I said, man, she's about 32 years old. So, uh, Cavillo was striking at air a lot versus Loopy Gast, did nothing with the takedowns and control. Can't trust a zero and five fighter. She still outstruck her though, even though she's hitting air, she hit Loopy more than Loopy hit her too, though. Betting women to MMA. Is more dangerous than petting a rattlesnake. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. is true. <laughs> Wait, especially when you got the damn favorite, though. Especially when you got the favorite and like a big favorite, like Melissa Mullins. People, I think, are going to be pretty nervous as soon as like the first minute goes, and it's like, oh shit, both these girls are both like decently skilled to each other because girls usually don't really dominate. Well, each other. see, girls' fights they always play out closer than you think. Like you can yeah. you can tape as much as you want, and you can predict as much as you want i bet you it's gonna be like damn that was a closer fight than i thought <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why you got them big favorites or it's, it's, like, it's it just or something happens where it's like well i never would have thought that would have happened right. <laughs> it's like one or the other yeah it's just it's crazy what a bet uh has Cavillo? she fought loopy close she did loopy you know yep. what loopy's banned Sorry, guys. Loopy's banned. I tried to tell you guys about Loopy. I've been trying to. She got lucky against Richie. I've been trying to tell you that girl's not that good. I've been she trying to tell you clearly that. clearly beat Richie. I'm super shocked she did, though. Richie's pretty good. Like, Richie, Richie would have a good, be better chance of beating Jandaroba than Loopy because Lu Richie's actually got better, like, takedown defense. Like, how she just stopped, like, all of Jillian Robertson's shots. I don't yeah, that would be I, a close fight, but. I, I'm mad I didn't bet Jandaroba last week. But, like I said, I wasn't. I wasn't into girls then, Johnny. But now, super. No, I'm not. I'm not back. I'm not back. This ain't gonna be a Cody's back in the girls. <laughs> this ain't gonna be a back in the girl every week. But like, like I said, man, um, Cody was only on men. Now he's on girls again. Let's back, go. Baby. Let's go, I'm Cody. Back. Let's back. back. <laughs> oh man, we crazy. Oh, I love this channel. 
This is it. Subscribe and follow. Agreed. We got 190 people in here right now. We're going to get more. So definitely hit that like button and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all of that stuff. The links are below in the description if you don't know where it's at. Come on, guys. On show. Cody putting the work. Read Kabilo. Changing my mind. There you go. Yeah. Uh, we got John saying everybody on Kabila this week as they should be. Okay. Right. That always John. scares me a little bit too when everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, mm, maybe I should look into it a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not touching this fight. Like I said, the only thing I would do is the over. <laughs> I, I think it's towards that. Ethan K. Hansen took her down. Kabila is better in every aspect of the sport. What about yes. winning? Uh, yeah, she is. She's got better wins. <laughs> her wins are better. But she man. lost five in a row. I don't care who it is. She can't win. Two okay. splits in the last two. She's almost on a two fight win. We got streak. Gary Skulls in the house. Johnny K for Prez. That's crazy, man. It but would... I would do it. Gary Skulls. This See, guy. Hula, Gary Hula Hooping out here, man. <laughs> That's what I feel like he's doing right there. Hula Gary's right a ball here. guy. That's kind of a weirdo, Gary. too. There he is. What? I, I don't know who he is. He's a <laughs> <laughs> baby shark MMA. What's up, man? Appreciate you coming out. Like the little baby shark. Uh, I do have. I like Kabilo that man. on my full baby pick though. MMA, baby. Let's go. Just haven't put money on. Well, you better do it before she does. She's not plus money anymore. I will say that because people are uh, betting her. Money's coming in on her. But I want to do it right now if you want it. Yeah. Dirty Red says no way. I play a fighter that is zero and five heading into that fight. Okay, me and Dirty. Last you know two that splits. Means. Oh, uh, hot sheesh, take. Sheesh. <laughs> sheesh. And we got Jarek is the only person other than me saying per- Para will win this fight. <laughs> right on. Let's All go. Right. I don't mind it, Jarek. Love Appreciate it. Appreciate the comment. Hang there out we go. Us, man. Hang out. Yes. Uh, next fight here, which is going to be the new fight that just happened today. So I have zero tape on Pedro. Flacio <laughs> versus Flacco. versus Victor Hugo. Um, Actually, yeah, I'm just gonna go Hugo this dude real quick. I don't know this guy. I'll be honest. Was he on Dino White Contender Series? I think that name sounds familiar. Um, 2021. He won actually. Oh, he hasn't fought in three years. Well, no, he had a boxing fight and then he won. Oh, so what recently is this? a tough enough fight. Oh, uh, Pedro Balcao. 16 and 3, 31, 5, 6, 66. Hmm. Lost to Brian Alvarez. This dude. Yeah. Let's see. Contender series win. Um James Barnes. I mean, he's fighting decently. 42 years old. James Barnes is 42 years old. So he's no. 38. How, yeah, how the how did that guy? I mean, he was fourteen and four, but he's forty two now, so he's thirty nine when they fought. Huh? That's trippy for the for the contender series. That's Got a ground and pound in the third round with that dude. Um, barely, barely won that fight. Three hmm. losses. I'm gonna go Hugo. Yeah, um, right now, anyways. No submission losses. One TKO loss. Injured his shoulder, so he didn't even really get knocked out. Um, I'm. A, I mean. I'm gonna go Hugo, obviously, but I'm not that high on Hugo. I was I liked Ali Halatang against that dude. Like that dude had four fights in the last five years, and he's getting like knee bars and weird stuff like that. And I, I had big questions about his gas tank a little bit too. Like even in that last fight, like on a contender series, like that dude kept like initiating the grappling with him, you know, and, and like clinching him and 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 rolling around with him where I think Ali Alatang was gonna be. Alatang Haile or whatever was going to be able to keep that fight standing and piece that dude up, but Mm-mm. we'll see. Though. I don't think he's good, but good thing that fight got canceled for Alatang and a lot I of do. people's bets because Hugo would have won that fight. Uh, Cody, you excited about the new Joker in October? Yeah, I want to watch that. I definitely I like Joaquin Phoenix. Dope. He's a good actor. Yeah, that was a good movie. I liked it too. So people Jeff used Bruno. to tell me I look like when he's in Gladiator. He does a thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, what's his name again? The, the Joaquin actor, Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix. He yeah. looks exactly like my wife's dad. Oh no, shit! It's weird, weird. But obviously, my wife's dad's a little bit older than him. I think I don't know how old he is, but they're maybe they're around the same age. I don't know, but look exactly like that. It's weird. I like <laughs> the the Napoleon movie. He's in that, and I saw like some pictures and stuff. I'm like, oh my god, like that's identical. And my, even my wife's like, oh. 
<laughs> just like him. That's wild. Uh, Jeff Bruno says, Cody, back on to girls again. Who says conversation therapy doesn't work? There exactly. you go. Look at that. That's Blood 3000. What's up, guys? Much love. I got Curtis. There we go. Let's go, S Blood. Like okay. your style. Let's see. Uh, like fun style. fact Petrosian, Kayo, and Rodriguez all fought and won on the same night Jesus. as Falcayo. In the Dana White, that interesting. Kyle, interesting. they're fighting 39 year olds. That's a little crazy. I will say that. And he so, went to the third round. So. Yeah. Interesting indeed. All right. Next fight here we're going to do is Norma Dumont versus Jermaine Durandamy. And I'll let you start that one off because last one didn't really count. We were just fucking around. Fucking around. Um, yeah, so in this fight, Norma will see if the, if the dump truck can get down to the 135. Beep, um, beep. And from there, she gets down to 135, and then Jermaine comes in, and she's at 135, and they both weigh in, and then they both fight. I think Jermaine beats the shit out of Norma Dumont. Like, dude, Jermaine's good, man. Like, she's got good takedown defense, and Norma's not the greatest wrestler. We've seen her get out grappled by Macy Chase on. Um, she's a monster, though. Yeah, she is good. I I, I do, th- but um, like Jermaine Demand Durandamy's the monster, dude. On the feet, like like Norma's got good striking, but she gets hit, man. She you've seen Carol Rosa drop her. You've seen her get hit by even um, like I said, uh, fucking Macy Chase on a lot of girls, dude. She got knocked out by uh, Megan Anderson, but like she's hittable. But she is good. She's got a decent clinch. Um, she's got pretty decent jujitsu on the ground, but she doesn't have the best wrestling in the world. She's a striker. Like she's more, but she's well-rounded, but she's more of a striker. She wants to win most of her fights by striking. And like Jermaine, Jermaine Durand me, dude, is going to be throwing up bombs. Like she's got two losses. Like I was telling you earlier, Jermaine, even though she's coming back, I get it. She hasn't fought in three and a half years. Um, all these girls are, are coming down. They're coming in to try to get this title. Like at 135, now that Nunez is gone, they know they got a chance. So Norma's dropping weight. Jermaine's coming back. Like it's, well, it's like fucking the Kuma thing where everybody's just coming to meet up for that. But um, yeah, man, like like go, let's see. Jermaine lost to Nunez in 2019 and she lost to Nunez in 2013. Other than that, she that's the, her only losses since 2012. So 14 years. Her only two losses are to Nunez. In them 14 years, she's beat Larissa Pacheco, knocked her out. You, we know who, who she is. She's a beast over there in PFL. Uh, beat Holly Holm, Raquel Pennington, the current champ, knocked out Aspen Ladd and choked Juliana Pena out in the third round in her last fight. This girl's a savage, dude. She's the dude. She hits so hard on the feet. Her her takedown defense and grappling is like way catching up because obviously she's coming from a, a, a Muay Thai background, dude. She's like been fighting forever like that so um she's gonna have the better striking here she's gonna hit way harder i think she can keep this fight standing where she hits way harder she's she's got them weird long arms and like i said choking out juliana pen is not easy to do like she's the one that's usually choking girls out and that was a really good back and forth fight in there um i'm t- I, i'm not that high on dumont never have been like so I, i'm taking uh she barely beat carol rosa on short notice rosa was on short notice like up a weight class looking thick and um i'm taking Jer- jermaine durand me i wanted to better if i dude if i didn't already bet calvillo it was between i wanted to bet both of them but how crazy would i look coming out with two female plus 170 because they was both plus 175 when i did the take but like i don't see where Norma Dumont, I don't expect Jermaine to come back if she's not going to still be in shape. She's like a big athletic woman. She, you know what I mean? She, I don't think she gets out of shape outside of like fighting even and stuff. So give me Jermaine, man. Give me Jermaine. All right. Um, I normally do bet on Dumont, but I'm not betting her this fight, but I am picking her to win. And honestly, like it's going to be a close fight, I think in round one. But I just think Dumont's going to be able to pull away like she kind of does in some of her fights. Like, I think she I think Duranda me after this three and a half year layoff, she's going to look like, you know, a glimpse of her. She's like, oh, people are going to be so crazy. Like, she's going to be good. She's going to get her out of here. Like, I don't think so. And then she's going to start to wind down and tail off a little bit. I just don't trust the three and a half year layoff. Now, if we're talking about this fight happening three years ago or Duranda me was at least one fight a year. Probably would pick Durandamy all day, 
but this layoff is crazy and she's 39 years old again it's not like she's 34 or something like that and coming back from three years like this is a big layoff i saw in the, in the chat like injuries she gave birth a year ago like i don't know if this is her last fight maybe she wants to retire after this one no matter what who knows like maybe she wants to give it one last hurrah like there's just a lot of too many red flags for me i mean the good thing that you know, she's plus money. So if anybody's on that side, like that's what you want to do. Like if you want to take a shot now, overall on paper, she is the better fighter. It's just, those are the red flags for me. Like say that Jermaine comes in and she's like 95% of what she used to be. Like, how do you see Dumont win? Yeah, but I I don't think she's going to be 95% for three rounds. I think 95 for one, then maybe down to like 70 for in round two. She's going to fade. I just don't think she's going to keep that. But I'm saying, do you see Dumont like taking her down or just out striking her? I mean, I think she can just put a little pace on her as as the fight goes on. It just and she we've seen Dumont do you know stay on the feet. She can get some grappling going too. She can do whatever she wants. I don't. I can't predict what she's gonna do. Though. I'm not going right. to because women's Jermaine's okay. huge too, dude. She's gonna be two but inches taller with five inches of reach. If she's tired. She hasn't been in the ring. All that stuff. Like she can be taken down pretty easily. Like Norma's has a little bit of dump truck in her. She has a little bit of you know she can get she can get it. But uh, I'm just going to go Dumont by decision. I do think it'll be a close decision, though, too. I don't think it'll be a split one way or another. But um, I would just do the overs in this fight. I think Jer- uh, Dumont, Dumont's not dangerous at all. Jermaine is. Jermaine is early, but if it doesn't happen in the first round, that's this, this fight's going to decision. I can guarantee that. Yeah. I don't think so. Norma's pretty tough. I know she's been rocked a couple times, but. It's been finished. Megan Anderson, a girl built just like Jermaine, knocked her head off. She's way bigger than that. Way bigger. Jermaine's huge, dog. 5'9". Five, 5'9". Nine. Five, I know Megan, yeah, though. I think she five, was like 5'11 seven. or something, though. Yeah, she's my, massive. <laughs> but she's not that good, though. That's the difference. Like, Jermaine's got hands, bro. You see that uh, that that uh, over-the-top right? Boom. Hits Aspen Lad 15 seconds in and just crumbles her. Yep. good stuff. Yeah, I mean, this, like I said, I'm not betting this fight either. It's going to... I'm not confident again. No. So I'm just going to go with Norma because of the red flags. I think there's just more red flags on the Jermaine side. True that. True that. We got to see if Norma can get down to 135. Well, we got to see if Jermaine can too. True. <laughs> uh, Jermaine knew my mojo just like Kyle. It doesn't work that way. Only, That's what only, they say. But I think a year a year away. At Didn't least. Mackenzie Dern come back it. after her kid and just start whooping people? Yeah, but she took her a while. She was yeah, she did actually. Sloppy. She took a loss. Somebody, uh, I think yeah. that was He Boss. He Boss beat the shit out of her right when she came back. And then some of her fights she didn't win. Tisha Torres, I lost <laughs> pretty like that. because she didn't win that fight. Mm-hmm. So, and then she took two steps forward and then three back. And then I'm never betting her again. And that's why yeah. I bet Labosh, even yeah, though that fight was good. close. It can be good what it does. That's for sure. Yeah. Nope. 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 Uh, pregnancy over age 35 is considered a geriatric. Yep, she's a different kind of lady. We can't. Jermaine's a, the iron lady, baby. She, this is a, oh, okay, it's an athlete. Okay. It's an athlete. I was going to ask what percent you see her at Cody. I can't see anything over 80%. Yeah. As in, like, what she was back from then? What, yeah, from what she was, but like, okay. Man, I can see that. She's got them hands. If she keeps this fight standing, she's going to. She hits so she's much harder be than Dumont live so early away. for a finish, but I just don't know what's going to happen in rounds two or three. I do favor Dumont as the fight goes on. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. All I'm saying is, if Jermaine me pulls it off, I'll be stoked. Yeah, it'd be cool. Definitely. Dixon, I got four kids, and my wife is currently pregnant. There you go, Nate. Congratulations. There you go. Is it too much to ask for Duran to score a KO in her comeback fight? Yeah. I mean, she's going to have to do it early. But I think she can. I don't think it's out of the realm. I know I missed somebody here. We got fight talk only. I missed you. I I just remember when I saw your other post. Defend your effing units. Let's fucking go. Juggling between you boys and my guys at BTL. Too much heat for one night. Yeah, they're good too as well. So I'll give you that's fine if you juggle. Talk, that's Appreciate you coming out. Fight Talk is only. Definitely check him out sure. on Twitter. You haven't done that in a while, have you? I, d- I haven't seen it. Probably been the, busy uh, work, man. Yeah. But he uh, does like a community uh, pick for everybody, and they all have like a certain fight, and they do it. So definitely check that out and follow him on Twitter. He puts that out normally on Fridays. 
and it's a fun time. And Johnny Newquist, let's go representing, Johnny. supporting, and a sponsor sponsoring the show. show, keeping the lights on. Fighter going down a weight class generally generally win if they make weight. I don't. I like them going up. I mean, if you go look at like, think of anybody that like, okay, Dan Hooker going down to 145 gets knocked out. Um, I don't know why this can't. Kevin Kroon going down, getting knocked out by Haile Alatang. That's probably why I just watched that. But then like TJ Dillashaw going down, gets knocked out. Cody Garbrandt going down, gets knocked out. Then you got dudes going up like Gilbert Burns goes up, looks good at 170. You got dudes that go up like Strickland and all them from 170, 185, look good there. So even going up like Tiago Santos from 185 to 205, Changed his whole career around. So, yeah, I'm trying to think. It's like, like it's like Alexander Hernandez goes down to one one forty five, right? And I feel like he's going to be a little bigger. But what he had was speed and power at, at um, one fifty five. But I feel like when he drops to one forty five, he doesn't keep that power. Like I feel like he doesn't hit his heart. When I was just watching him fight like Bill Algio and even Billy Q the first time, it's like sometimes slower dudes like that. He would just come out and knock out Chris Grutzmacher and knock out. Mm-hmm. Um, uh what's the uh the dog mike breeden stuff like that the slower dudes like so he should come out and do that to damon jackson but i just don't know if he's got the power but i like when dudes go up i think they do better yeah i can see that i think more so like if they come down in weight but then it's, it's like bad inside it's like i mean Max jillian's Holloway. been doing very good at straw weight yeah, I will it's say all that. it's all about your style too. Because if you're if you're a, okay, if you're a small flyweight like Jillian was, and then you you can't get your grappling going because you got Macy Barber and all these big ass girls, but you go down to straw weight and you got grappling, that'll be a lot better grappling a smaller person. But it's uh-huh. like Max Holloway going from 145 to 155, it doesn't help him out because he doesn't hit hard enough. You know what I mean? So he's taking yeah. these big ass shots, boom, boom. But it, and usually down at 145, he's peppering these guys, you know. And I think he loses a little speed too. I think Max seemed a little slower at one because I just watched Max versus Poirier last night again. And um he just seems a little slower. Not that he's not good at 155, it's just yeah, I mean, it could help and hurt certain people, I guess. And it just depends if you're like a, a flabby, like one like it will look at Ludovic Klein going from 145 to 155. You know what I mean? Yeah, huge it's like huge. night and day. So I don't know, but there, Jose Aldo, he was about the only one that I can really remember going down a weight class, going down to uh, yeah, 35 being and successful and being successful. So yeah. we got New York city robber coming in late. I tried to warn you, Cody and your Sultan is for real. Dumas the real is eye a quitter. quitter. The man poked the man in the eyes, Robert. You watched that fight. Man. The man I poked mean, him in the fight. What do you mean? Yeah. No, no. I was I just saying like, in my, eye. my dude was like, ah, oh, he fucking poked my eyes. Nur Salton's like, oh, fuck I you. mean, Cheater. I wouldn't That's say a quitter, cheater. but he did get poked in the eye. <laughs> My guy's now, Nur Sultan, I mean, I don't know if he's for real, but I think he is UFC level. He's UFC yeah, level. for sure. 100%. But you seen Dumas was just starting to throw punches. He was just absorbing his shit, pushing him off. It was in the first round. Dude, what's his bruisey boo boy? I've got like, what, 30 first round finishes out of his 32 wins or whatever? That's a lot. So, like, what happens if he gets out of the first? He was throwing everything he could into every one of them punches at Dumas. Not like Dumas was doing much back, but like what he was doing wasn't bad. Then he gets poked in the eye and finished. Come on, man. I was so pissed at that. That should have been no contest. And like I said, Ruzi Bob, you can't tell me you don't know when you poke people in the fucking eyes. You don't think you would get someone's right. eye on your finger? Hey, he pulled a page you know out of the Chris Weidman book. And Chris Weidman knew. He's like, I don't care. I took that win like a champ. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, it, Cody! Crazy. All you can do is laugh. <laughs> like that, it's just terrible. Yeah, no. it's just a terrible night. Uh, Vasco, what's up, man? Appreciate you coming out as always. Let's see. Norma is five seven and had some extra pounds. She looks trimmed well on IGD. Okay, uh, work's been kicking my butt, but I told myself I will start being consistent again starting this weekend. Heads up for you boys. All right, that's awesome. Let's Definitely go. check I'll them out. The- Fight talk only on Twitter. Get ready. Be go follow the them. Uh, and he got lucky against Cody Bumdidge because Bumdidge pulled guillotine like 70 times and he wanted to quit on the stool after every freaking round. Who Cody, 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 Cody. <laughs> Charles hey, Radke versus knockout, versus Carl's Parates. That's a good Wait, yep. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a real I'm gonna good go fight, Parates right? on that one. That's just me. Cause he's huge. 
Uh, Racky, yeah. man. The way he just walks them dudes down, that's going to be a good fight. He ain't going to walk down Prates, though. Prates is going to be walking him down. Uh, next fight here is going to be Court McGee versus Alex Morono, and I believe it's my turn. Um, I got to go Alex Morono here. I just don't trust McGee. Mag- Court McGee at this point in his career, he's been knocked out twice recently. Um, and uh, just hasn't really been looking like himself <laughs> after getting knocked out. Like, I know he looked good against some of these lower level guys that he won recently, but like any non newcomer or old guy, like, I think Alex Morono can beat him. Like, he's younger. Court McGee's 39 years old. I'm um, not saying Morono is um you know has that ko power like one one punch ko power but i think he can wear down mcgee maybe land a good overhand and if this fight does get to the map moreno has sneaky grappling he really does and um maybe he can catch mcgee in something crazy too so i like moreno here i like his durability i like his cardio i like his volume i think he'll be able to catch mcgee maybe at some point later in the fight but i'm just going to go with decision but third round decision prop might be the way to go too as well um this is actually one of my confident picks, very small confident picks I have. This is one of them. I think he gets this one done. What about you, Cody? Um, yeah, man. I mean, I'm a little I'm all over Alex Morono here. Like Port McGee's been put to sleep like bad for the last two hard punches that's landed on him. Like Jeremiah Wells stole his soul. He took his chin. You can't be 30 fucking seven it. years old getting hit like that you know what i mean I, how, live it was yeah crazy. how long was he out for how long was he laying on that canvas for he was on the canvas for a while yeah no he <laughs> fucking went way out you know what i mean yeah. number of the shots like 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 that chuck liddell took one of them and then never comes back the same that was usually his thing he's a wrestler with good cardio and good durability you know what i mean he could take some shots and wear on you and he's still fighting close decisions because he's not that dangerous but now like dude 39 years old the, the, the shot matt brown hit him with didn't fully knock him out right but it just hit him and he just fell and his body was done like he was just like went to the ground kind of like like uh what i just watched cody garbrandt hit brian keller like when he mm-hmm. went down like they just you know cur- like but his body just shut off even if his brain didn't want to his body just shut off he went down and that wasn't even a big shot from matt brown that was a 43 mm-hmm. year old hitting him there too um He's slow in the striking, you know. Um, I don't think he's going to be able to come out and just take Alex Morono down and hold him down for three rounds, and that's what Court McGee usually does. Um, Alex Morono, like you said, he's not really the biggest one-shot knockout guy, but, dude, he's got weird herky-jerky style of striking where he's he's moving around, he catches you when you're coming in, he darts in and hits you with a, a, a awkward punch. And um, you see him dropping Pons and Nibio. Um, he's dropped a lot of people, uh, and I think he's going to finish freaking – Court McGee, he's yeah. he's gonna be so much faster, dude, and he's gonna hit him with one of these weird punches. It's just gonna put him down because it's not, Court McGee's fucking almost forty, and he probably shouldn't even be fighting. Like his wife and them that watched Jeremiah Wells take his soul at thirty-seven, and then the punch that that put him out at, at, from Matt Brown, dude. Like your wife should be like, dude, don't go in there no more. Don't go fight no more. Your chin's mm-hmm. gone. Like you're you're gonna just keep getting hurt. Like at this point, you're probably just gonna go out cold with every hard shot that hits him. But for some reason he's back in here. So give me Alex Morono. I think Alex Morono beats him. I think I think Alex Morono could have beat him even if they, they fought when Court was like 33 before his chin got taken away. Because Alex Morono is still a good fighter and he's going to have that speed advantage. And he's got good takedown defense and really good grappling on the ground. Like not many people use that as a strategy to beat Morono. It's just to take him down. So yeah, man, give me Morono by uh, KO first or second round. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Anakin says Moreno Morono. Uh, round one KO as well. Dixon Sider, Alex, a great yeah. white milk Morono, great white from Raw Torque. It's Morono, unanimous edition. Let's not act like court is Johnny. I mean, Shannon. Oh, come on, sheesh. Dixon. Come on, sheesh. man. I'm gonna get Johnny there. <laughs> court UFC says time was... off, bro. To recover from injury, not a good look. Yeah, but the injury I, is there's is a change. point in the, your career, especially if you're older. It's not going to (laughs) help if you're taking time off. You're like, you're losing speed. You're losing like everything else too. So like, it doesn't, it's kind of like a oxymoron too, but if he was going to get a win in the UFC, it was going to be Matt Brown Mm -hmm. and Matt Brown knocked his head off. Matt Brown's like, I'm getting like in the 170 or that ain't just gonna, you know what I mean? Like Brian Barberina beat Matt Brown and I love Matt Brown, but it's like, at this stage, man, if you're if court was gonna get a win, it was gonna be over 42 year old Matt Brown. 
Yep. Morono takes out veterans like he did to Cowboy and Tim Means. Yep. I remember the yeah. Cowboy one. Yeah. Can anyone confirm that a that a court just had the same neck injury as Weidman had? I don't know. I'm not even sure. I'm more, it's his jaw to me, no matter what. Yeah. Walker and Morono parlay. Okay. <laughs> but it's a little Walker's risky turn. with the walker. Walker, yeah, he might, he's gonna probably get through Bretsky, but uh, at least his line is getting a little bit more playable, There'd but be a I still time wouldn't to even fade play him, that now. But it's not against Bretzky because the problem we're we're gonna we'll get to, yeah we'll get there's a major problem. He, he couldn't dispatch Ponzi and Abiel. He, he, just, he took dude, that Ponzi's fight on short notice too. Shit, he dude, took no, it on short notice yeah, and he looked he, great the first two rounds until he got yeah. KO'd in the third. But other than he was like, gassed. Like Ponzi was beating Kevin Holland, he gets hit with that big shot. But Ponzi's usually durable. Shit, that's one of the yeah. tougher dudes. You know what I mean? But yeah, yep, yep, yep. Let's see. Morono has a top 10 UFC walkout song. What is it? I don't remember it off the top of my remember. head. I heard McGee signed a new contract with his UFC during. Whoa, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. That, that's that's okay, dokey. That's, that's crazy. Man. No, I don't hate you, Dixon. You're good. You're good. Everyone trusting Curtis now. I know he KO'd Allen. But like this dude lost to Gastelum, got outclassed by a mob off and outstriked by Hermanson in a sloppy fight against Bur- yeah. Big difference. I will Herm- say that one. Hermanson has striking defense. Gastelum has a chin. Brandon Allen has neither. What about Mark Andre Barrio though? That what? was a very close fight. Mark Andre Barrio's tough. And then he wasn't striking with Curtis. Curse counter striker. Brandon Allen can't help but throw punches in case he got the chin to back it up. That's his problem. What's like, you guys five favorite? rounds in that small cage? What's your guys' Curtis. favorite? What's your guys' favorite round prop? <laughs> uh, I I like the uh, Bahamandas over one and a half. Um, what's mine? Shoot, I don't even know. I'll let you think about it. Vente Trace MMA, what's up, man? Appreciate you coming out. Ponzinibbio was a beast before illness. Bro was yeah, one of the but... only few who could KO Magni. Very true. Ponzi was a savage dude for sure before the blood. Uh... A blood freaking a crazy blood uh disease or whatever yeah infection blood. yeah okay uh main card we got 250 people in here so if you're new go ahead and hit that like button subscribe if you haven't hit the like button go ahead and do that right now if you're on twitter go follow us on twitter all that good stuff but uh we got trevor peak versus charlie campbell and i believe it's my turn or yours i can't remember me you mine yes yeah, so this okay, is gonna be a freaking good fight crazy fight it's it's very hard to predict this fight because like obviously charlie uh campbell has better boxing cleaner crisper boxing <clears throat> maybe more one shot knockout power you know what i mean i don't know he's not he he, he kind of gets dudes hurt and then finishes them after he gets them hurt more than just like you know what uh like yuri perjaka does the dude mm-hmm. he knocks him out so but um well rounded. He not he's he's finished like his last five wins like early, or he's gotten finished early in that last fight. But he's got two decisions early in his career. But we've seen him get knocked out before, so I, I guess he's kind of got cardio. But we don't really know because he's finishing guys in the first round. He trains at Sarah Longo, so I'm gonna assume you know like you don't get to see too much. That's what I'm saying. If you go back in his career, it's hard to see if he's really got grappling or not because he hasn't had to use none of it in like the last five years. So good boxing. Good power. His uppercut is fucking phenomenal. Like his right uppercut, he really with both hands, but um, good at getting people hurt and, and good at going in for the finish. Obviously, it didn't work against Chris Duncan. You know, he had him hurt bad a couple times, and then Chris Duncan hit him with the one shot to knock him out, which if you're back in uh, Charlie Campbell, you got to be a little worried because Trevor Peaks, that same kind of dude that can get hurt, take them big shots, and then just land one big club out of mm-hmm. nowhere, you know, and put you out. Trevor Peak, um. If he fights like he did last fight, he's going to get beat. You know what I mean? If you just come out there and you try to work around the outside and and um, don't use any of your craziness and kind of the stuff that got you there, you didn't look good in the striking against uh, that last dude. What was that dude's name? Muhammad Yaya or something. Yeah. And that dude's terrible. So yeah. uh, Peak had to keep wrestling him and, um, you know, got the clear win. But it was it was just like a, he didn't look good in that style. That's just not your style because – even even though you're waiting on the outside to throw a punch, you're still big and heavy, and everything you throw is power, so it's slow. So you're not going to be out there at range just throwing these slow, big punches. 
especially not against Charlie Campbell. So he's going to have to come. It's in the small cage, man. And Charlie Campbell, um, he's going to like that. Yeah. Yeah. Dude didn't bring no fire to Trevor peak to ever really get him in that dog fight. They did a couple times for like 20 seconds, but um, Charlie Campbell is going to bring that to him. I feel like, you know what I mean? He's going to start hitting him. He's going to feel he has him hurt and they're going to go back and forth. And Charlie Campbell is probably going to beat the shit out of Trevor peak in the first round. But I feel like as they come out in the second round, if Trevor can keep just trying to wrestle and do this and just wearing on Charlie Campbell, dude, that he can eventually take over on this kid. I don't think Charlie Campbell is going to be built like a Chepe Mariscal. And even if you go watch that fight, Dude, Chepe, Chepe took some super big shots, you know, and, mm -hmm. and survived that and showed great cardio, too. So I don't know if I'm going to be betting this fight. I like the under two and a half, but um, I'm going to pick the underdog. I'm going to pick Trevor Peak here. I think his I durability, his durability show up. So let's go. I knew it. Uh, I'm just going to go the other side, but I do agree with everything you said. I think just Campbell's just the more technical striker. Uh, I don't think know if he's going to be able to knock out trevor peak so that is a worry for me but trevor peak is he's the definition of a junkyard dog like he's not technical at all but he's going to stay in there he's going to fight for your money it might not look the prettiest but this dude's not going to go out like he's not going to quit he's going to go out swinging hammer fist and all uppercuts side cuts whatever you want whatever he does it's crazy so I do like him as a fighter. I think he's very entertaining. Um, the last fight for him, though, didn't look all that great. I know he tried to show off a little bit of his wrestling. Cool. But I don't know if that's going to be enough in this fight. Because I do think Charlie Campbell is the more technical fighter. And I know it doesn't look all that great that he got. Um, Charlie Campbell couldn't finish Chris Duncan in the Contender Series at one time. But you also have to remember, too, like these guys are fighting for a contract. He was going in for the kill. He had Chris Duncan wobbled like three times and he just got caught. It happens to a lot of people, especially with the Dana White Contender Series fighters. They want to get that finish because they know if they get a finish, they're pretty much going to get that contract no matter what. They don't want to go to decision. That's what, the, that's what the, the best part about the Dana White Contender Series is. These guys go for it like it's their job is on the line and they want to get hired like and that that makes you know for good entertainment so i'll give him a little bit of a pass there but I, like i said he did fight somebody that was you know hasn't fought in forever in alex reyes now he did get the knockout like he should but that's not saying much either so give me charlie campbell though i i wish this fight was a little bit closer with the odds maybe i would lay a little bit on campbell but i don't know i just i peak always has that crazy junkyard dog uh chance to win this fight and that's what i'm a little bit worried about so with my pick campbell but i'm just gonna probably watch this as a fight i don't mind the unders i think um but i just don't know if campbell will be able to knock out peak like peak is just a freaking madman and he just doesn't go away and so that could be his demise like cody said earlier that he's trying to get a, he's going to try to get him out of there early when he gets him stunned but he won't and then he'll get knocked out so we'll see what happens but I think it's going to be a fun fight just to watch personally. Let's see. Anakin's got Trevor Peak by hammer fist in the second round. Uh, DG Campbell decision. Peak is a junkyard dog, but he's not technical. Yaya is awful too. I agree. Terrible. It's funny because every opponent will be technically better than Peak and he will still win some. True. Exactly. That's very true. We Dick's just don't know. We don't know what. Oh, there we go. Enough said. Charlie Campbell That's has sad. an OnlyFans, guys. It's a red flag. That means fade him immediately and uh, put a little bit of money on peak because that's what happens somehow. I don't know. It's weird, but it happens. If Campbell rushes in on peak like he did against Duncan, he loses. Yeah, he needs to be very, very patient. <laughs> uh, like both guys, but going peak nation just tougher. Okay. Give me peak bet of the week. Okay. Peak is kill or can't be killed. I agree with that. <laughs> it's hilarious. Love it. Uh, AJ in the house. What's up, AJ? It's your boy, AJ, live from work. And I got 10 units on Kavila. Let's go. Okay. He knows what's up. AJ knows what time it is. Damn, That's AJ. Kill. Let's go. I even thought that Malik Lewis was somehow better because how he did the peak early. Yes. And then the Peruvian prospect destroyed him like it was nothing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Raw says dog or pass. I do agree with that. I can't lay minus 170 or whatever it is now or 200 uh, on yeah 175 on him. Like if it was closer, maybe like 120, 130, maybe I would, but not like 
Peak has. I feel all like he's going to have to knock him out. I just don't. I mean, but like I said, Campbell. Campbell's going to have to knock Peak out. I don't know if he goes, but like what Peak? I don't. Can we I think it's here? the opposite. That's the problem. I think but, Campbell can win a decision. I don't like, think Peak can win a decision. Peak's training out in Colorado too now with like Chepe Mariscal and uh, uh, Justin Gaethje and them boys. So yeah, but I just help. don't think he's going to. But is he yeah. going to come out the slow peak and get picked apart on the outside, or is he going to come out like the junkyard dog? That's the question. Because, look, yeah. I bet freaking Jamal Emmers on the fact that he was going to come out, use his speed and technical striking around the outside, and just pick Lamar apart when he came in. No, he comes out and tries to just dog him. So it's going to depend a lot on how he fights. True. Uh, Sicky even says if peak comes out, Fighting like he did against Yaya won't be close. He tried to fight technically, and it was horrible. He has to fight like a madman or he loses easily. I mean, I kind of agree with that. I really do. Like, he like in this fight, he does need to make it a brawl. I think he needs to make it dirty and he just does. do his 100%. traditional. Te- like, this isn't – maybe Yaya, he had a better chance to, like, show off a little bit of his technicality skills or what he learned. But this fight, I don't think you need to do that. Just go well, crazy once, and go for well, he it. Will, he will once he starts getting hit. It's just Yaya wasn't bringing nothing to him. No, like, that and that's the reason it. why. I get totally get it. But this time, you can't do that. That's why I'm saying, like, Emmer's coming out like a dummy and just starting to just wake Landwer up one minute into the fight. You are dumb. You're dumb. You, you are really dumb, for real. Are you trying to be Johnny Rebel tonight? Why do you go against all my OnlyFans fades? You're breaking my heart. I am. Unfortunately, I did go against all of them. Yeah, that's your problem, Johnny. That's your problem, Johnny. I don't want to get into it, but cool, I mean, it sucks, but it is what it is. Hey, if I lose, I lose. I don't have any bets on any of those fights, actually, so I'm okay with losing a pick. It's not a big deal for me. Uh, next fight's going to be Lucas Bretsky versus Walter Walker, and I believe it's... I just messed up. Is it my turn? I think it I is. I think it is, but I can go because you probably had to talk for a couple minutes. You probably all, I did, all but uncomfortable it's... when I left. No, oh, I, I was just having fun. I was just having fun with the crowd and the crew, out, hanging chilling, out, all 250 chilling. people. If you want to go, I don't care. I really Which don't. Which fight? Okay. Um. Yeah. So Gretzky and Walker. It's going to be yeah, the man, same I, breakdown, basically. <laughs> yeah, I did my tape study and um, Walter Walker is not that good, dude. He's a freaking like he's a, he's like. He's, he's not Johnny Walker. He doesn't strike like that. He's a wrestler. And to me, like, he he doesn't really even have great jujitsu or great ground and pound or, like, anything, really. You watch his last fight with um, uh, Nicholson, who used to be in the UFC, who's, like, you know, he's been all around. He's not the greatest fighter. He's not a terrible fighter, but he's a little guy, too. He used to fight at, like, light heavyweight and stuff like that. Alex Nicholson. But, uh, dude, like, Walter Walker came out. Threw a couple punches with this dude. And then Eminem Walker's huge. He's 6'6". Six, six. Um, took him down. Tried to do some ground and pound. Tried, you know, basically sat in this dude's guard. They get back up four minutes in. And, and this dude's fucking gassed. Like, he's gassed. And the rest of the fight's sloppy as hell. He's just lucky he's in there with a smaller dude that isn't all that great. And uh, <clears throat> there's going to be a time to fade him. But Lucas Bresky's not the guy to fade him. The biggest problem is Lucas Bresky, he's not real dangerous on the feet, right? He he's, doesn't have good takedown defense, but he does have a pretty good get up game. But he gets tired too. So as and especially like he got tired with Carl Williams, a two hundred thirty five pound, two hundred thirty six pound wrestler wrestling on him. Like Walter Walker, six foot six, dude. And he's gonna be just when he takes him down, he's gonna be wearing on him more. But I still wouldn't bet Walter Walker with any amount of money, dude. Um, because like he's gonna, he may be gassed four minutes into this fight, and Bresky may be able to win it if he can just stop from getting taken down. Alex Nicholson just couldn't stop these sloppy takedowns. Like even after like Walter got so tired, like he's just like running, doing jump knees and stuff, and you can tell he's not really a striker like that. So, bro, oh, that's gonna be crazy. But I gotta pick him to win this fight because, like I said, Bresky is the worst heavyweight in the UFC outside of maybe Martin Boudet. You know what I mean? So, like, you don't want to fade him. What about Chris Barnett? Um, Bro, Chris Barnett might be able to get this, dude. You seen what he did to Jake Collier when Jake Collier's Martin Boudet cast out on him? Chris Barnett. Yeah. Yeah. But Boudet's actually got decent cardio for a big man. He does. He just can't strike or take a punch. But... Bretsky's not good, dude. Like he's not that good, but he can win this fight. I would, I would not bet Walter Walker. But like I said, even when I was doing it, looking at it, and Walter Walker was minus four hundred, like I couldn't bet on Bretsky because he's so bad. He's so bad. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't think Walker is all that great either. I just think he's just a touch better than Bretzky. <laughs> and that's not saying much. Uh, the wrestling from Walker can get it, can get Bretzky down for sure. We've seen it against uh, Carl Williams. Uh, Bretzky could not stop any takedowns at all. Um, and Walker is going to be way bigger than Carl Williams, like way bigger, like 30 pounds heavier and like three or four inches taller. Like he's bigger than that. And um, there's no way Brett's going to be able to stop the takedowns. Um, maybe if this fight gets extended, he'll be, if Walker gasses, like you said, Cody, I mean, maybe Brett's can pull away a, a crazy, I don't know, 29, 28 decision. But if this fight gets out of the first round and there's no takedowns in the first, they like this fight's going over one and a half. I kind of like the over one and a half in this spot as well. The sl- sloppy heavyweight fights that are just low level. They usually go over one and a half. We've seen it in a lot of these fights recently with heavyweights. And it's only at minus 180. I don't think it's too bad. It could be like a little parlay piece if you want to throw in that with like something safe that you like. But um, I'm going to go with Walker to win. I'm going to say by decision. It's going to be a slow, sloppy decision. But I think it's going to happen. <laughs> but we'll see. Bretzky, I mean, he's got a chance. But I just don't think he has a chance. Let's put it that way. Uh, Baby Sharp said... I have Walker in a parlay, and I'm wondering if he's going to be my losing leg. Uh, I don't want to put any bad juju on you, but I hope he's not either. How about that? Uh, strangely confident in Bretsky on the juice. I think he's not wins, banking on him, though. Like, well, awesome. yeah, I think just I think because... he wins too, but I'm just worried about the gas after like a round and a half. A show, a show. But during That's the small cage, he can clinch Bretsky up against the cage. I just I wish Bretsky for heavyweight was more dangerous than you could fade him. He's not, and he's and he's not even like a 265 heavyweight. He's like a 240, 245 heavyweight. Like Walker is gonna be 260, 265. Oh, he's gonna be 280 and, when they fight. Dude. Yeah, he's, and he's gonna, gonna be. A, he's a big That's dude, a big boy, dude. So. That's another reason why I'm going with him as well, but just because he's going to be the bigger guy that can get the takedowns. Like that, it is what it is. But if he can't, then it's going to be a little sweaty. All right, next fight is going to be Ignacio Bahamandez versus Christos Giagos, and I believe it's my turn this time. Yeah. Um, this is going to be a fun fight, and I always go back to so with Christos Giagos. Obviously, I want to go watch the Daniel Zell Huber fight. And because I think Ignacio and Zell Huber are pretty similar fighters. I do think Zell Huber is better, but, um, you know, Zell Huber was able to stuff the takedowns and he got an anaconda choke on Giagos eventually in the second round. Do I think that's going to happen again? I mean, I think it can. Um, Baja Mondes is going to be way taller. His t- We did see in Nashville, though, his takedown defense is not the greatest, but he does work off his back. And that's what sucked about watching that fight too, because he didn't get up at all. And that worries me in this fight a little bit. I will say that, but I don't think Christos Giagos is the same level as Ludovic Klein either. So this is like the, the watered down version of Ludovic Klein versus (laughs) Ignacio Bahamandes, but I'm going to go with Bahamandes. I think he can get taken down in the first round, maybe once, maybe twice. But I think as the fight goes on, Christos does slow down a bit. He does get hit a lot too. The um, Bahamandes is going to have a reach advantage. And um, like I said earlier in the stream, I do like the over one and a half in this fight. Um, Bahamandes' wins, a lot of them are over one and a half rounds. And I do think he does get a finish, but I do think it's going to be like late second or even third round. Um, just when Giagos can't get those takedowns and he's going to be a little sloppy on the feet and then he's going to get probably touched up or maybe even uh, guillotined or Darce choked by uh, Bahamandes. Bahamandes has a pretty good uh, front choke too. So um, maybe you can look at that in the props too. But give me Bahamandes and I'll say by like a third round decision prop bet. But I, I mean, I'm fairly confident he wins this fight, but I'm not confident enough to lay like the three minus 340 after the Ludovic Klein fight I'm just a little scared but I know Christos is not as good as Ludovic Klein I know it in my heart of hearts but that hurt my heart that night Cody watching that whole fight the way it happened it hurt my heart it did well I mean yeah but like he didn't just go out there and completely out wrestle him he dropped him in the first round Bahamanda like Klein dropped him that's how he got on top in the first round I didn't like his get up game but he no he had no get up game but um 
climb is a lot better than Giago's. The the big yeah. difference is is heart and cardio too. Is because like Klein's throwing power leg kicks, dude. He was actually checking like Bahamanda's like, like the difference in the striking and the grappling is gonna be different. It's like Giago's, he's got a left hook. That's pretty good. You know what I mean? But um he's got okay wrestling, okay jujitsu, but I don't think he's gonna be able to he might be able to land a takedown in the first round, but he tends to fade. And it's not only that he tends to fade, but like when he's not the hammer, he tends to get finished. I think what he's been finished. Giago's has how many losses? Nine or something. He's been finished like eight of them. A lot of them been by submission too. Six That's why I kind of like that prop oh, I might think, be a juicy prop. Yeah, yeah, because of, like even with what Zell Huber did to him, he cracked Zell Huber in the first round, and um, you're gonna have that. Like he he's gonna crack some people, but don't mistake it as like Giagos is some knockout artist, dude. Like he's got decent power. He's gonna knock out Ricky Glenn, right? But um, Bahamandez is a great striker. He's got he's very tough and durable too. Like you've seen in all of his other fights. Uh, I think that like even his Roosevelt Roberts win is a better win than Giagos is going to be uh, definitely the Trey Ogden win. That's obviously aging well. But um, yeah, man, I, I think outside of the Giagos getting, you know, a finish in the first round, I don't think he wins this fight. I think he slows down. I think Bahamandez is kicking his legs out, switching stances, beating him up, standing up. Um, outside outside of landing a lucky punch, which we've seen Bahamond is super durable. Even the punch mm -hmm. that he took from Ludwig Klein, Ludwig Klein knocks dudes out. You know what I mean? That fucker's yeah. got power, real power. Um, and like I said, like Bahamondes couldn't get like Ludwig Klein's a high level kickboxer, and Bahamondes couldn't get his leg kicks going. He did in the second round, he won the second round. It was one one going into the third, but um Ludovic ended up getting some wrestling going later on in the fight. But um, it's not like Giagos is terrible. It's just that he doesn't have the cardio. He can't, I, I'm saying, I'm saying right now, he, he's not going to be able to replicate what Ludovic Klein did. I see yeah. Bahamandez getting the win here. His sweat stanch switches and his movement is what stops a lot of the takedowns and stuff. So um, I see him just beating up on, on Giagos' legs, getting out of that first round and just beating this dude up with pressure. And then in the third round, hitting him with something big. I think he gets a submission because Giagos likes to go out by sub rather than uh, KO. He's got six sub losses. I think uh, Bahamandez gives him a seventh sub loss. There you go. I like that. I like it. Let's see what everyone else says. We got... I missed one. Anakin says, let's go Bahamandez. We got Deb the dude in the house. What's up, Deb? Appreciate you coming All that's out. that's being said... If Bahamandez fucks me this time, he's dead to me. Done. That's I'm scared. Like D I think he wins, Cody. No. I don't want. I'm not putting any bad juju, but like Nashville crushed my heart. It did. Oh, hey, I'm going you, with the over. <laughs> these young kids, they got to take them little lessons. That's another. Yeah, he's 26. Jagos, he's yeah, 26. Jagos, like 34. He's took a lot of damage. Like, but yeah, that first round is going to be sketchy. You might. I mean, you might be able to get Bahamandez at a. a, a yeah, I know. Dude, that's another thing, bro. How the fuck is Chris Weidman and motherfucking OSP and these dudes looking how they're looking at fucking 40? Get the fuck out of here. Now they're in the best years of their life. Somehow just, oh, I'm just, I'm back to life. Yeah, fucking Chris title. Weidman, I poked what? his way. But he was OSP. winning before that, and his cardio was all the way up, and he's taking big shots to the face from Bruno. And Dude, like Bruno nothing, Silva bro. didn't do anything in round one. Like, purposely, purposely well, got down too, didn't but, do anything in But I'm one. saying these dudes that are 30 It was It was 40. a little too weird that he didn't do anything bro, in round one. OSP's been gassing out in the middle of the – fucking second round since 2000 fucking 17 and all of a sudden this dude's well, throwing 300 that's because kennedy strikes. wasn't doing anything and then the shots he took in the third osp you see know. tanner boser finish if he would have done, like, done that if he would have done that in the Williams. second round he would have quit in the third that's the thing kennedy didn't waited way he too long to do anything dude, he, he shouldn't even have cardio after one like logic tells you if you watch all the tape that motherfucker ain't got no cardio after one match but here we are. And Chris we Weidman are. looking like he's fucking 27 out there, poking people in the eyes. I still don't think he looked that great, but it is. I like it. I poking, I poking his way to victory. You got to do what you got to do at 39. <laughs> yeah, facts. Hey, facts. Uh, next fight we're going to do is Morgan Sherrier versus Chepe Mariscal. Let you start. Fucking super tough fight to call here, man. Um, Sherrier is good. The, the, the dude's good, man. He's got good takedown defense. He's got good grappling, offense, wrestling itself. Um, he's got excellent striking, fast, powerful body kicks. You've seen his last fight against Zucchini, where he's able to hit him with them body kicks and get him out of there. He's got some decently, some decent um, 
fighting level outside of the UFC. He's got a win over, uh, what's his name, Gomez. I believe, yeah, William Gomez. He Hill hooked him back in 2016 when they were both coming up in the French scene. But um, he also uh, fought some dudes in England. He lost to Jordan Vicenic, and then there's uh, Paul Hughes. But both of them dudes are really good. Them dudes both probably end up being over in the UFC. They keep all fighting each other back and forth. But they're both really good and, and, and will probably be in the UFC. I'm surprised if they're not on a contender series or anything right now. Um, but like even Pedro Souza, that I think that dude was an older dude or something, uh, 35. But um, no, um, he's good, he's well rounded, he's fast, he's powerful, he has a, a good durability. The weirdest thing I would tell you about this dude, the weirdest thing, go back and look at his last 12 fights. This man in his last 12 fights has finished six people and he's gone to majority or split decision in the other six fights. No regular decisions, dude. He's got if if you look, um, yeah, majority, majority, split, 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 majority, like three out of his last. And like I said, that's a weird stat. Six finishes, six of them that went to split decision. That's freaking crazy. But um, the dude hits hard. Uh, he's well rounded. He's got a ton of experience, and then he's fighting Chepe Mariscal, who's a junkyard dog. We got to start it off with that, and he's a well rounded junkyard dog. He's got a judo black belt. He wrestled in college. He's got good boxing, good Muay Thai. He's up there training with Justin Gaethje. Uh, good leg kicks. You seen him take some power leg kicks against Jack Jenkins. Was able to just eat him. Come back in the second round, start putting the pressure on him. Had that judo toss that that messed up his elbow. Did you get a dog? Have you always had a dog? I've always had a dog. Okay, I knew you had some cats. His name's Loki. He's a little plug. He's a little pug. Yes, he is. What's up, dude? Is he? But has he barked it's for any dogs or anything? He's a breather, huh? Yeah, he he snorts all the time. Yeah, he he, he likes to search for truffles. <laughs> He's in truffles uh, with the little pigs and shit. And they're like yep. the pigs do that. Yep. Yep. He's a little pig. But uh, yeah, man. So Chepe's well rounded, good cardio, very tough. Um, he's took this, he took this fight on short notice, but as we seen against, uh, Trevor peak up a weight class, he stays in shape. So this is a very tough fight. I mean, you can't just say that Cheppy's going to win because he's a junkyard dog because this other dude's tough as hell too. Uh, the one fight that he lost by split decision over Paul Hughes, that was a five round fight in cage warriors for the title. Um, and I think this other one was too, to be honest. So he's gone five rounds. He's got good cardio. I seen him get hurt against that Hughes dude in the third round. Like he was beating that Hughes dude up the first round, the second round, and most of the third. Then he got hurt and then he started getting out grappled. But this is going to be a crazy fight. I'm going with Chepe, but I don't know if I'm going to get around the bet. And I seen him at plus 140. I thought people was going to get crazy and get him up to like plus 180. And then it, it, it came back down. But um, I'm picking Chepe, but uh, no bets on him. No bets on it yet because this Morgan kid's good. He's yep. really good. Yeah, I um well from what I heard from you, I do agree. Um, I think this fight will be close, and I am on the Chepe side, but I this Morgan guy's a freaking good striker, and yep. that's what worries me a little bit. And Chepe's just gonna have to out dog him, he's gonna have to make this a brawl. We've seen it though. That's what I like, and that's why I'm picking him. He makes yep. fights brawls that he needs to. He even made a freaking Trevor Peak fight a brawl. And he won that fight. Like that yeah. is talent, right there. Up a weight class on short Up notice. Up a weight class on short notice. So and he took some big shots in that fight too. He did, and I, um, I just think you know the better striker is going to be Sherrier, but I think the better just overall guy with like intangibles, like with cardio, with toughness, with dogness, if you want to say, it's going to be Chepe. So. Um, the longer the fight goes again, I do favor Chepe. So maybe this is a better live betting spot <laughs> after the first round. So you said your me, dog was breathing like Gazi. Yeah. I know. I saw that. I started laughing too. <laughs> but, uh, give me Chepe to win by decision. I do think this fight will be close at, you know, at plus 100. I was thinking about maybe laying a little bit of a bet there too, but I just think it's too close. I can't even like, even, even though he's plus money still like. You know, plus 140 looks a lot better than 100. So I kind of just don't, I'm going to stay away. But the overs aren't bad because I do like the overs. I don't yeah. think Morgan's going to be able to knock out Mariscal. And I don't think Mariscal is going to be able to finish Morgan either. He might, he might get him in the third, if anything. But I, I don't think so. It's just me. I mean, I think, I think that this. Uh, that's the only reason I didn't bet him already, dude, is because I think this Morgan kid's good. good. Like, I don't think he's going to fold. I think this is going to be 
who could, and he could catch him. We've seen Chepe. Mm-hmm. I mean, what Steve Garcia got him, but then like uh, Joe Anderson Brito, but Brito hits hard. Yep. What? Um, I was trying to think about that. Uh, who would you take, Brito or Sadiq Yusuf, in a fight? Like Joe Anderson Brito? Yeah. Hmm. Is there any other in the three round fight? <laughs> yeah, three rounds. Of them I dudes. think I would go with Brito just because I just think he's more dangerous. Okay. And I usually go with the more dangerous guy in a close fight. Like right. the grappling is going to be crazy for Brito. Now, on the feet, like I kind of think it's close to be honest. It is, but Brito slows down, but like Cindy or, uh, Sadiq's got pretty good grappling too. It's a, I, I want to see that fight, but I that's just something I'm thinking about for next week's fights because it's yeah. Man. I hear you. I hear you. But the next yeah. fight we're gonna do co-main event: Alexander Hernandez versus Damon Jackson. And I believe it's my turn, right? Um, I'll go in either yeah. way. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be a fun fight. I saw in the interviews that they're kind of. Uh, there's some bad blood in the air still from Damon Jackson when Alex Hernandez was making fun of Cowboy Cerrone or something. And it was, you have to go watch the interviews. It's pretty funny. But uh, there might be a little bit of bad blood uh, going in the ring here after that because I don't think Hernandez knew about it. And he's like, really? Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but Hernandez is a good striker. Like, he's got good power. He does have wrestling he can use, but he probably doesn't want to use it in this fight. He does fade a little bit as the fight goes on, but he's always going to be dangerous early. And Jackson, like he's a grappler wrestler guy. He does have some sneaky striking, a little bit unorthodox, but he's not going to knock you out unless you're Pat Sabatini. And um, yeah, he just wants to get, you know, get you to the ground and stay on top and then just wear on you that way. Which So to me, that's striker versus grappler here. And I just lean the striker in this one. I like Hernandez at featherweight. I think he's better, actually. Um, he's growing into it, I should say. I know in his first couple fights, he didn't look all that great, but I do see some improvement. I think featherweight might be the place for him because that lightweight, I think he was just getting out uh, powered in some fights. If he couldn't get the finish early, I think he was losing late. But this, like, I think featherweight's going to be a little bit better for him. I think the power is going to be better for him as well. Um, and I think he can knock out Jackson. Jackson Chin isn't all that great. Um, now, I just don't know if Alexander's going to be able to stuff all the takedowns the longer the fight goes. And that that's what kind of scares me to bet him. But for a pick, I'm going to go with Hernandez because I do think he's going to be able to get the knockout. And I'll say in the I'll say in the first round, I think he's going to catch him. What do you think? Tough fight, dude. Um, it's like I was saying earlier about people dropping weight. Dude, I don't think they carry the same explosive power when they drop weight like um hernandez coming down like he should have been able to light billy q up he did light him up in the first round i mean he took him down and beat him up and stuff and um was doing okay in the second so he kind of gas got hit by a big shot um but now we know it's like what the hell he should put he should have put him out <laughs> and then with um when he fought bill algio at 145 he didn't really throw a lot you know he it seemed like he was kind of kind of conserving his energy or something because he didn't throw much in the first round he started coming on a little bit in the second round but then algio dropped him but uh, yeah, this is a this is a tough one to call because like I feel like Hernandez is the better fighter because definitely in the beginning he's gonna have the better wrestling. Like Jackson has pretty good wrestling and body lock takedowns, but Hernandez should be able to stop it. I don't know if Hernan- I, I, if I was Hernandez, I wouldn't really be taking down freaking Damon Jackson because he's just gonna grapple and he's got good jujitsu and he's gonna wear on you, and keep moving and this and that. And he's a good wrestler. He wrestled in college himself, mm-hmm. so. It's hard for two college wrestler level dudes to just hold each other down. That's a super hard thing to do unless you're like Bo Nickel fucking with Cody Brunich. Then it might be a, a different story. But these dudes, man, they're going to be probably scrambling. But um, I see Hernandez wanting to keep it standing. And usually at 155, when he had his power and explosion, man, like he would put a guy like Damon Jackson out that's going to be way slower than him. And um, just not near as technical. And we've seen Damon Jackson flatlined a couple times. You know, Ilya got him. Uh, Dan Ige got him. The Kovalev or whatever dude in uh, PFL had him with a flying knee right off the bat and, like, sent him into a praying position. But uh, so he can go to sleep. And it's like he goes to sleep, sleep. So um, I don't know. I'm on Hernandez here. But, dude, like, if – if if um. Matt ja- or Damon Jackson can even come out and start landing some shots like he did against uh fucking uh what the f- 
oh, against Billy Q, like Damon Jackson was doing good, you know, the first like seven minutes of that. If I remember we were in Nashville watching that, I'm mm-hmm. like, holy shit. And that one dude, he's like, I'm the best gambler in the world. He's this fucking old turd dude. And he was Everyone's like, just wait, just wait. Hope you ain't, in the, hope, hope you ain't in supporting in the, in the chat. But yeah, he was like, oh, remember, he's like, I'm the best to do this. And like screaming all this shit. And it was all hilarious. On Damon Jackson and then Billy Q. Then Billy Q's like uncle or dad or somebody was sitting right by us. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Um, a lot but, of people uh, were. <laughs> yeah, dude, that, that was a fun time. But yeah, man, um, it's just a tough fight to call because like I, I Hernandez is the better fighter. He's still young, he's like 31. He hasn't looked good. It is weird that the UFC, like Alexander Hernandez, is like, hey man, I'm gonna cut down to 145. I, I got I know I've had gas issues my whole life, but what do they do? They threw him a junkyard dog every time. Yeah, Billy Q cardio machine wins by cardio. Bill Algio cardio machine wins by cardio. And now Damon Jackson's like a cardio machine. It usually out cardios and dogs people. So it's weird. They gave him them three people. They didn't give him nobody that was just like, he could just out wrestle easily or do whatever, you know? So yeah. give me, uh, give me Hernandez, but not like super confident because like if they, if, if his body language starts changing in that second, Damon Jackson can, he's got strong body locks that he, that he uses like hip tosses with it to get guys down. If he starts getting on top of Hernandez, it's going to get ugly quick. And he starts putting that pace on him. Y'all could see that two minutes left in the second. Jackson finally lands a takedown, gets on top, and just starts working him, you know. And you see, we see him. It's tough to bet Hernandez because we've seen him fold so many times. So, mm-hmm. like, is that the guy, you know what I mean, you want to have your money on? So No. No. I'll take him, but I'm not going to bet him. Yeah. Same here. Uh, let's see what everyone says. Uh, Yippee Kaye, what's up, man? Say, what do you think about the junkyard dog parlay of Peak Chepe Ooh, well, in action, man? I actually like it. I know Dixon said it's the, the only fans with Chepe, but I like that as far as taking a risk, and that's got to pay good. Yeah, Th- three almost three dogs, junkyard dogs at dog prices, and all three of them a chance to win for show. <laughs> yeah, he's saying you're asking said, for trouble, yeah. though. Said you're asking, asking for say, don't say we didn't warn you, fam. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Sharp says uh, Damon got hair plugs. Yeah, it's, it looked like he got a little bit of hair on top of his head. Does he? Yeah, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> hair plug hair lock. Plug lock. New, new, new mythical fighter. MMA Joey says, I think I could <laughs> flatline Damon Jackson, to be honest. <laughs> what is up, MMA Joey? If that's the real MMA Joey. What's up, MMA Joey? What's up, man? I don't know. because That's not your picture, is it? <laughs> that's definitely Dr. Phil. We got Haunter. Uh, in what world is this a co main event? Yeah, exactly. Fucking right, Haunter. Exactly. exactly. Best guess on the fight of the night. Hi, Alan and Jackson, man. Or Allen and Jack, Allen Jackson, Allen, and Allen Jackson, baby. <laughs> Trev- uh, no, or no, no, you Jeff got Trevor Peak. Could be good. Trevor Peak and Campbell. Trevor Peak. Um, I want to see Bahamandas like at his at how good we've seen him at. I want to see him do that and and just Bahamandas up fucking Giagos because he's yeah, the kid's really good, dude. Um, he is if he if he's it's got to be char. It's got to be fucking Peak, right? Like and peak or or peak. the Mariscal, but the the best I'd fight say is peak be or Allen and Allen and Curtis as far as both dudes are technical and they're tough as shit, and uh, Allen can't wrestle. Yeah, laying in the weeds tonight, enjoying the show. Real fight picks. Yes. Appreciate you yes. as always, our guy. Blood, we gonna eat this week. I hope so. Otherwise, you're gonna die. Death. For some purposes, you guys riding with olives or. Armin, if you don't know me by now, DG, you know who I'm riding you with. Ask somebody. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. Arleo, baby. But you got some cards, but I was going to say, you got some stuff back there. What are them one <laughs> things called? What are them things called? Funko Pops. Either Connor McGregor, though. Funko Pop. Riding them Connor balls, huh? Them are probably worth more. There you go. Uh, oh, that's nice. Is that a zebra one? Fuck, yep. Yeah, that's a nice card. There it's it is. PSA 10. Let's go. There's a couple on eBay that I'm going to try to get because whenever I was fights, that's when a lot of his good cards come out. So I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, all right, we got main event here. We got almost 300 people, 295. So go ahead and hit the like button for us. Subscribe, uh, follow us on Twitter, all that good stuff. But the main event, Brendan Allen versus Chris Curtis. And I think it's your turn. What's wrong with you, girl? With baby blood. You don't feel good. She's been sick, dude. Strap oh, the weather's been crappy over here. Hi, How about you? Hi. 
<laughs> she, dude, she's been sick and they had allergies, but I think she's got like strep throat. So no. it's been she went she had to go to baby hospital last night. The girl's a little overreacted, but it is what it is. Got that good insurance. So do what you, you gotta, go. do. gotta do what you gotta do. Well, work. All right, who do you like here? Main event. Yeah, man. Um I, I like Chris Curtis, it has nothing to do with the fact he already beat him, but it has everything to do with the fact that he already beat him because it's not, I'm not just going to, going to do that to him again because he's already done it once. It's all about the style, dude. Like Brendan Allen's a great fighter, right? He's got fuck, his, his kickboxing super improved. Um, he's got good wrestling. It's not like the top of the line. It's not a, a college wrestling national champ, but he's got pretty good wrestling. Um, and then he, his, like I said, his striking's good. And then he's got really, really, really good jujitsu. Um, problem is is he can't use that stuff against chris curtis you've seen in the first fight like chris curtis like chris curtis and sean strickland type fighters are brendan allen's like kryptonite because he can't grapple them because they both got phenomenal takedown defense like 95 percent takedown defense you know what i mean um so he, he he tried with chris curtis he even like picked him up it was weird i don't think he got credited with the takedown he tried to take his back chris curtis stopped the the uh leg from coming in they reset, they fight some more Chris Curtis. They both hitting each other, like Brendan Allen. It's not like he's defenseless standing up, but um, then he tries to take another shot and he's just not even close to getting it. You know what I mean? So now he knows from there, it's just striking. Throw in the small cage. Like like I said, Strickland Curtis is his, is his kryptonite because them dudes can take his shots. They can stop his grappling and they fucking can't be knocked out. Like, they're so durable. Like, I mean, I know Curtis got knocked out by what? Ray Cooper. That was when he had to fight like two or three fights in one night for PFL, like six six years ago or something. But you know, like, they can take what Brandon Allen has to offer on the feet, and then they hurt him. Because Brandon Allen just, like, he he doesn't take damage well. You've seen him get dropped two times against Bruno uh, Silva. He, had to, he couldn't even out-wrestle. He couldn't even out-wrestle. Second hug. Not beauty. You'll be better. I'll be done here in a minute. But uh, yeah, man. So Chris Curtis, excellent takedown defense. I believe he's going to stop Brennan Allen's takedowns. Even if Brennan Allen gets him down, he's not choking out Chris Curtis, and he's not going to really like just hold him down for all three rounds or five rounds. That's for sure. These dudes are going to be striking, man. And like I said, Brennan Allen, good kick game, good all that. But like. Chris Curtis is going to be hitting him with shots in between it, just like he did. He's going to be roasting the body. This is five rounds in the small cage, which hurts uh, Brendan Allen a lot more. Like people said, oh, well, why can't Brendan Allen's just going to uh, Jack Hermanson him? Well, Brendan Allen's not Jack Hermanson, and that was in the big cage. And Jack Hermanson has way better striking defense than Brendan Allen does. Uh, then um, even even Imavov, dude, Imavov's better than Brendan Allen, in my opinion. Like even in the grappling, yeah, he's I a big dude. Um, Brendan, I go, look, who, who the fuck is Brendan Allen beat where everybody's like, he's on this high trajectory and all this, like he beat fucking Paul Craig, which he should have because he's better everywhere than Paul Craig. Right. Um, he beat freaking, uh, Mark or Munoz, which he, he should, because he's got the jujitsu to stay, to, to hang with the dude. And then he's, he's going to have the better striking, better cardio, but who else does he beat? Christoph Jocko, Malcoon. He didn't even beat Malcoon. He beat Sam Alvey. Puna Haley Soriano. I think, I think both guys have fought like the same level of competition. <laughs> yeah. I was looking at Chris, both. I'm like, Chris Curtis, but Chris Curtis already beat him. Chris, dude, like, yeah. like even with Gastelum, they're like, Gastelum went with him for three rounds. With, dude, that was three rounds. And Chris Curtis Gastelum took so many big shots on the chin in there. And he's just so durable that he can eat it. Kurt, Calvin Gastelum is one of the most durable people on earth. Brennan Allen is not, dude. You've seen against Sean Strickland. Like Sean Strickland, when Brennan Allen and Sean Strickland fought in the small cage, Strickland's just jabbing him, punching him. Like, Allen's trying to do all this shit, but he has no striking defense, and he just eats the shots, eats the shots. Um, Strickland took him down. Then they get up, and he just keeps eating the shots, dude, because he has no striking defense. And then freaking – I just don't see him winning this fight. I don't – he can't take – Chris Curtis has some of the best takedown defense there is, right? He's got good mm -hmm. cardio, and he's going to be a tougher dude, and they're going to be striking the whole time. And I just don't see Brendan Allen. Maybe he kicks him in the head and, like, knocks him out. But if these guys strike for five rounds, I don't see Brendan Allen beating him. I see Chris Curtis working the body. While Brendan Allen's landing decent shots, Chris Curtis is going to be landing meaningful shots. They're going to take full effect. I think Curtis knocks him out in the third or fourth round. Could do it earlier like he did last time, but his striking defense is so good. Takedown defense is so good. Brendan Allen's going to beat a lot of dudes. I just don't think – it's going to be more of the dudes that he can just take down. You know what I mean? And out grapple. He's not going to be able to do that here. It's just going to be striking. 
give me the tougher dude that hits way harder. Yeah. Chris Action Man Curves plus 185. What? Yeah. Huh? I like it. And like I said earlier in the stream, or if I even said this, or backstage, whatever, I'm probably going to bet on some underdogs where my picks are the opposite. And this is one of them because I really think this is a close 50 50 fight. And, it, and um, the only reason why I'm going with Allen here is I do like he is going to be the younger fighter. I, he's in his prime at this time. They did fight like two or three years ago. Allen wasn't the same kind of Allen. Like Allen's losing to some bad guys. Now he's, lo- he's slowly coming up. I know Curtis is fighting the same kind of level guys. He's hit or miss, but just depending on who it is. But I mean, I like the role that he's on. He's on a five fight winning streak. He's got a lot of momentum. I feel like he is improving. And I just think Curtis is just, he's been the same. Like he's not, he's not really improving. He's the same kind of fighter we see time and time again from fight to fight to fight. I see a little bit more improvement from Allen, even though some fights like Malcoon fight, he might've lost that fight. I get it, but I'm seeing improvements from that fight anyways. And what was I going to say? I forgot now. You're gonna pick I, I do. Th- no, I'm I'm picking Allen. I just, I like, and then also too. Oh, this is what I was going to say. Lately in rematches, it just doesn't happen the same way. The per- the person who wins the first one isn't winning the second. We saw it last week. Um, Oslan choked well, out. Well, that was one. But Oslan beat Turkelau. And then uh, uh, there was a couple other ones that happened too. Like it, there, it's just not happening. So, I'm going with Allen, but how at the price, him tell me how you see him. I can see like. Allen catching him with something crazy or even winning a decision. But I'm like, like out the, striking the thing, him or out grappling him or both. A little bit of both. Like, because here's the thing with Chris Curtis he's so low volume and he wants to go counters only that he could lose points that way. We've, I've, we've seen it in some fights like that. Now, now, will Allen play that game where he's going to be a point fighter we don't know i would probably say no but there is a chance that he could maybe he does try to get some wrestling going clinch him up against the cage maybe he doesn't get any takedowns or anything like that but he's winning the minutes that way like chris i think chris really needs a knockout not to say that he can't it is five rounds so there's more of a chance for him to get the knockout especially later in the fight but i think there's a chance too where alan could maybe get this fight to the mat and maybe Maybe work something crazy. Maybe we we just don't know. And then also, I think he's the minute winner here. I don't think Curtis is going to be able to win all the minutes. He might, you know, if he gets the knockdowns, he'll win the rounds. But I just don't think he's going to win the minutes. So, like I said, I don't mind the bet at all at plus money at plus one seventy or whatever it's at right now for Chris Curtis. Like I said, I think I might even just throw a unit on it just to be just for funsies, um, because I think this will be a close fight. And I you know do. in your heart, Chris Curtis gonna give him the business. He could. It's the kryptonite. Like I said, Brandon Allen. Let me let me see uh, real quick something. I want to see the uh, so the middleweights. Um, they say what? Brandon Allen is number nine. So, I mean, in What's the top Chris ten, Curtis? I don't see him beating Nasser Dean. Do you think he could beat Costa? I don't think he beats Costa. Not after what I think see. that fight would go to decision. Yeah, Marvin <laughs> Vittori. Maybe he could beat Vittori because maybe just he could maybe I, I am not high on Vittori at all. Vittori so took that beating yes. from Jared Cannonier that you might not come back from. He's he's not beating Jared Cannonier. He's not beating Whitaker or Drikas. So like, I don't know, man. I don't think that. I don't. Like I said, like he's not. This isn't really a big step up in competition for him. Even though he did lose to him like two or three years ago. Though. Yeah, no, I totally get it. But I think he's like, I think Allen has improved a lot since the last time they fought. Now, I think Chris Curtis is literally the same fighter. Right. But like so, all his, all, all of Allen's wins besides to um, Bruno Silva were all from grappling dudes, basically. Like, I mean, him and Munoz had a terrible kickboxing fight until he ended up Munoz gassed in the third and he took him down and choked him out. But, um, most people like he, he had to use grappling on Jocko. Him and Malcoon grappled. Um, he grappled Sam Alvey. He grappled Paul Craig. Like that's way the way he wins most of his fights. I don't think he's gonna be able to grapple at all in this fight. He may like, he may get a takedown in the first round, but like but in the he's last fight, fight for like, all that stuff too. In the last fight when they fought, I don't even think I don't remember. He didn't even try to like grapple him, did he? Yeah, he did. He took him down, he tried to take his back against the cage. 
and then um chris curtis stopped it off somebody put the, oh guru uh our guru scouting mma guru dude um put up a thing and it just showed like and then it just shows like chris curtis just okay, pops three, his leg he off tried that. three takedowns and yeah and got know. zero and that and then I mean, by the, after the first one where he kind of like picked curtis up curtis at the ground it seemed like it would have been kind of a takedown curtis scoots to the side of the cage he hops on his back and tries to take his back curtis stops him from getting the leg around and then after that the takedowns were just terrible they weren't even nowhere close to being taken down and that's what i said then he realized all right now we're striking and he landed some good strikes on curtis too but curtis is roasting him to the body curtis is hitting him with big shots you can just see that when curtis lands it's affecting Allen way more and then by the second round grappling's out of the question and curtis was hitting him with big shots and ended up hitting him with knees to the body like he beat the shit out of him on the side of the cage like Allen didn't go to sleep he just fucking was getting beat up and literally went down he did he he did like cheaty did in them dudes where they just fold over looking for the rep to help him so i think he knows now you got five rounds of this where he can't grapple where he's going to be throwing his strikes like i said he's going to land him but curtis is going to be hitting him in the body hitting him to the body coming up to the head and just like the more damage he puts on chris and it's in the small cage which helps curtis so much because even if alan wanted to do like jack hermanson style it's hard to do that in a small cage jack hermanson they fought in england that was in a big cage and chris curtis was on short notice and a whole bunch of stuff there too but yeah dude i just see the more he he works alan to the body this and that the takedowns ain't coming alan starts getting more stationary dude and as they get stationary and they start exchanging punches who do who you think's taking them punches Chris Curtis can take them punches, but I don't think Brendan Allen. We've seen him. We've seen Sean Strickland do the same thing to him. Sean Strickland didn't knock him out cold. He just kept punching him in the face until Brendan Allen's like, yeah, I'm going to head out now. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. and there ain't I'm none gonna, of that I'm in rolling, Chris Curtis. I'm just rolling with Allen. I don't know why. It's a gut feeling, but I don't, like I said, I don't Rudolph believe anybody. This might shot. Rudolph, what did he shoot? 20 takedowns? On Allen or on Chris Curtis, he shot 20 of them, 18 or 20, right? Got zero. The I mean, Imavov's the only one that took him down. It's not like he got a ton of time, but Imavov's big and he's got good, he's got more of a wrestling background than he's from Dagestan. You know what I mean? He's got more mm -hmm. of a wrestling background than Brendan Allen. Like we've seen Malkoon and well, Malkoon's got great wrestling, though, but like even Jocko took Brendan Allen down. So I don't know. I just think that dude, this is gonna come down to who's fucking tougher. In that five round in that cage over five rounds, and we're gonna see. I think Chris Curtis, dude, that motherfucker's training with Sean Strickland all day, dude, just taking yeah, punches. But we've seen him slow down in some fights too, especially three rounders. Like he's just he's really just too low volume sometimes, just looking for the knockout shot. And I just don't know. Like in the Rodolfo fight, a good example, he did have stuff twenty takedowns, which he did, but he was freaking gassed doing it in the third round. But Rodolfo was gassed too, so it was just a gas versus gas fighter. And like at that point, like you know who's gonna win? Yeah, and somehow, round? somehow Rodolfo took like fucking seventy rib roasters. I don't know how that dude stayed up. <laughs> Bro, Chris Curtis was fucking working him to the body. And yeah, you stopped 20 takedowns, but he still won all them rounds. But yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's gonna be a, a close big, fight. strong dude, too. You know what I mean? Like when he's grabbing yeah. on you, trying to take you down, that's gonna take a little out of you. But yeah, I do think good. this will, like I said, it's gonna be a close fight either way you look at it. I, it's dude, gonna be I fun. Feel so good going in with Chris Curtis at plus 185. Like weird, confident, weirdly confident. Like fucking. Like he should be the fan. Like we are, and like you said, not all rematches go the same. But this is a style matchup. This ain't like all right. Last time, dude got well, lucky in this. It's it, over five rounds. Chris Curtis gonna beat this dude down. It's a dog fight in a small cage. Five rounds. That I think that helps Curtis more than Allen. It does help. Honest. It does help him a little bit more. I would say. But again, like what's he gonna look like in round four? If I was he only gonna throw like fifteen punches? Like I don't know. I think he gets He's so there low that, volume. Dude. He hits so hard though. That left comes out of nowhere. Um, you see him with like Buckley, all these dudes, man. It only takes one. And I just don't think Brandon Allen's gonna have that one shot for him. But okay. right. I don't right. I think the line's crazy as shit, though. It's not like Brandon Allen went on some streak where he yeah, beat say Jack Hermanson why... and four like he beat fucking Paul Craig and Andre Muniz. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, what are we talking about here? Well, that's why I kind of want to play Curtis Moneyline because of that reason alone and he beat it's Brandon, super close brendan allen beat bruno silva which we've seen what he's about like mark Antonio and andre barry oh it's a freaking good win rudolfo Vieira is a good win the brendan allen's a good win joe quinn buckley's a good win you know what i mean i've yeah so we'll see it's gonna be a good fight good fight good fight the good gas fight let's close. see if allen improved you think Allen could take them shots uh calvin gasolin was taking bro he hit him with some big uppercuts well, i don't and... think 
if Allen was smart, he wouldn't put himself in that situation. <laughs> that situation is going to arise. They're going to go into the fray. We shall see. We shall see. But uh, we appreciate everyone showing up. Uh, let's see what everyone else says here real quick. We got Ryan saying, I think Curtis is going to be hesitant, waiting for this big counter shot. Allen gets a takedown in a second and starts treating subs and landing ground pound. Allen decision or oh, late God. sub. Possibility, but I hope not. Uh, Haunter's going to call you out. Really, Cody? Sam Alvey win is imp- impressive. Very it impressive. Is super duper, but <laughs> super duper. <laughs> no, but like, yeah, no, you know, you he knows that ain't impressive. Like, Brandon Allen ain't really. I mean, you see, we seen you, you dude. If you watch, I think they're both fighting the same level, guys. I will, yeah, say but that. if you watch, it's just the style. If you watch freaking Brandon Allen it. fight Chris Curtis and Sean Strickland, he pretty much got his ass beat. Like, most of the fight, like in that, like an ass beating. And at the end of the fight was even worse when they both finished him in the second round. And he's just like getting beat down and fucking folds down. He didn't get knocked out by either dude. He just got hit hard and fucking turns over. So that it's just the dog fight. Chris Curtis is a dog dude. And, and in the end, he's just got the kryptonite for Brendan Allen. I think Brendan Allen's good and he's going to beat people, but not the dudes that he can't take down and then can't take. Down. Yeah. Also, Chris Curtis is taking this fight on short notice. Is that oh, playing a part? It's not that short, though. It's been like, you know, a freaking month. And he, he fought three and a half months ago, and he trains with Strickland. You know this dude's in shape. Well, I'm just throwing it out there. You never know. Came in, last time he came in and whooped Brandon Allen's ass, it was on short notice, too. Well, that Hunter like, said oh, Allen would steal Rodolfo's lunch money. That guy's a fraud. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. But so did uh, so did Allen or Curtis. I mean, but Curtis already done stole Brandon Allen's lunch money. He gave him a wedgie. Picked him up, put his head in the fucking toilet. <laughs> it was not all his friends. Allen boxing still not that impressive for me, but Curtis got worse Possibly. since they fought. See, that's what I'm I'm saying. Like, I just think Allen is improving, and Curtis is kind of staying the same. Oh, so maybe the, at this point, listen, no, Allen's the better fighter. He's the better all around fighter. He's got well, better yeah. kick game. He's faster, but maybe it's just enough more to volume. push him over that edge. He can't take the dude down. He can't take the dude's punch. But what if he can? Maybe he has I'll, a trick up his sleeve. I hope so. Because he's gonna need it. <laughs> well, you be, you better not because you have a bet. <laughs> I, dude, I got like two point three five units doing like four point five, and he's gonna win. Like, dude, I love Chris Curtis in this spot, and I mean, not only the fact you've already seen him whoop this dude, but like, I love him in this spot. I don't see why Allen's minus two fifty. Like, not what's changed so much between well, he's the minus last time they fought? 200. Well, I wish well, when I, I would have been. Plus 185, oh, he was yeah. minus like 240. But I'm saying, what? I mean, because it's not like Curtis has just been getting dog walked by everybody. You know what I mean? He beat mm-hmm. Buckley since then. He, he beat Mark Andre Barrio since then. Um, I just don't understand. And then he whooped Allen since then. So I just don't understand what happened in them two years. Because, like I said, Curtis has shown some big decline, but he just, he's not to me, in my opinion. So. I just don't I don't get the line. It should be like a pick 'em to me. Honestly, like cuz I don't know. Well, let's see. Uh, I mean I can see closer to a, I would give Allen like maybe like a minus 150, 150 ish. He's going to start getting beat up through them ribs. He's going to go up against the cage. And Curtis is going to be hitting him with them knees again, bro. And he's just going to fucking fall. Like, and that's not going to happen with Curtis. We know that. He's not going to get beat down on the cage and just slowly fucking melt into the canvas and let the. He could. Maybe this is the time. He is 36 done. years old, Cody. And that's the, another thing. It's like the whole time, it's just one left hand. Like, if you're an Allen backer, and then, like I said, it doesn't go to the ground. It, after the first half, of I know the first why round. you like Chris Curtis. He's born in Cincinnati, Ohio. Sin I City, baby. Sin I City. knew it. I knew it. That's what they used to do when I go talk with the Cincinnati dudes. They go Sin City. Do that. Really? That's Sin weird. City. Yeah, Sin C I N. I get it, but it's weird. I don't like it. I didn't like it either. I didn't do it. I just showed them <laughs> what they did. I dap a motherfucker up like a real man. Well, guys, that is UFC Vegas 90 Sin City edition. Um, <laughs> thanks, everybody, for watching and, and hanging out with us for a little over two hours. Hope we gave you some knowledge and some bets that you can maybe potentially play. Some good and, jokes. Um, yeah. Do you have anything else to say before we take off here? No. No, I just like you said, man, I appreciate everybody coming out. Sicky, Jordan, DG, Dev, Dev, and Ryan, Jordan. Um, I seen Bunny Hunter snuck in, Haunter. James, my dude James, I just seen that. Haunter. Um, DJ. Yeah. MMA Ricky. MMA Badger. 
Fight talk only Badger, the Badger. Didn't see it, Bunny. Yeah, Bunny shopped in. He said he was late. Yeah, real fight picks. Everybody, man. Armando, Johnny Bands, SD, Baby Crusader. Shark. All these big Baby guys. Sharp. Baby Sharp MMA. I like that. I like I that. Know. It's good stuff. The numbers, Mason. I didn't even see our dude numbers. Mason was in here too. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see that. Like All that. right. Good luck, everybody. Take care. We'll see you next time. Oh, should we tell them that? Oh, fuck. We got to make a ladder challenge, bro. You want to do that real quick? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who you like? Don't um, say Chris Curse. So we got to get it to an even. Who's a, who's a lower okay. guy? I like we the, I, are both on Morono heavy, right? Yeah, I love Morono. Let's put but him I in also a like that, that, that uh, Trevor Peak under two and a half, but that's not getting to 100. That's not getting to even. Not, mm. Right? I don't know because it's not on DraftKings yet. It, um, that, what's, that line set at the under one and a half. What's Murano at? Minus 300? Minus 305 right now. What do you um, think about Brendan Allen over two and a half? Them rib roasters, bro. He got finished in the second by by Sean Baja Mendez over one and a half. What do you like? How how you feel about Hernandez Jackson under two and a half? You think them dudes are gonna get at it? How about we do Can Damon Jackson finish Hernandez? I don't know, but he has a shot if he gets a fight to the mat. I'm just worried it's gonna be boring after a round and a half because they're both gonna slow down and they don't have that finishing ability anymore. How about both this? Mm -hmm. Um, what is the uh, what's the Campbell Peak under? What's that at? Under one and a half. It's minus one forty-five. I hate them one and a half. And one Me and too. Suck it, dude. Do um, you want to do the Vulture Walker over one and a half? Yeah. What's that minus one? What would that get us to? Plus one hundred six. Yeah. Do that one. You want to do the Walker or do you want to do Bahamandas? I really like the Bahamandas. What was the Bahamandas one? <laughs> Over one and a half is minus one ninety, so it'd be plus one hundred two. I like that. <laughs> Which would be like, like better that. though? It's only going to be I a like ten that. cent difference. I don't think Bahamandas finishes Giagos in under one and a half, and I don't see Giagos finishing Bahamandas. <laughs> so, I mean, I th I like there's it a, lot, a lot less I, I personally variables probably at the lower weight. You know what I mean? Then. Wait a minute. Ways, but. This is the exact same play that I have. <laughs> That's your play? It is. That's I didn't even know until I just saw it. Yeah. Um, we could do something different if you want. I don't care. I mean, I really I mean, like it well, clearly. The other one would be mine. The other one would be like one of my bets. So. Go ahead. You do, what, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Um, I don't Let's do Morono and you pick. I'm just going to put it on me like that, huh? What do you like? Um, you like can the Walker like, one? I like what it. About, what can we get it at uh, Piera over in Calvillo? Because I don't see that fight going under. Is that That's a minus 375. Oh, okay. What about, I wish we, yeah. let's do the Bahamandes one. Okay. Bahamandes over one and a half. Because you know what I mean? Like, I feel like they're going to have less variables than two, two sloppier heavyweights. No, I like it. Clearly. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, that sounds familiar. That sounds so familiar. Yeah. I mean, I got a uh, Morono and Bahamandez already in a parlay. Oh, okay. So we're on the same page basically then. Yeah. I guess. All right. Put this in. Boom, boom, boom. There it is. Defend your units parlay. Um, so we're we starting at 25 or 50. What do you want to start? At? I don't care. Let's start at 25. Okay. Yeah. And we're just going to do the whole thing. And then on this one, because we've done three of them, right? Two of we them. We lose in step three every yeah, yeah. Fucking time. But two of them, we were up to like 130. So when we do get to the step three and we're at like 280 or 250 or whatever, whatever, or well, we'd probably be only be up to like 100 now, but we'll get some more plus money. I think we started at 50 on the other one. But once we get mm -hmm. up, then we'll take our 25 back out of it. So no matter what happens in it, it'll all be profit. You know what yeah. I mean? Or we'll at least have our money back because we've been getting up pretty high already. But I, we're going to hit one of these. Both of them that we lost were like crazy. Hey, yeah. Brandon Moreno split decision. 
and then Peyton Talbot knocking out Simon. Never like, would have thought that see, would happen. Yeah, I didn't see that happening. Like that didn't that not even close. So we'll start it at this one. Um, and uh we'll just keep it going, man. And we got 300 next card, so we're definitely getting through step two. We just gotta roll it over into Charlie O at plus two hundred. Let's go. Hey, you never know. You never I'll, know. I'm, I'll you do never it. Know. I'll let it ride. Oh, I know you will. So maybe, maybe. And that'd be plus 200. That could take you from 50 to what, 150 or something. Uh, yes, sir. 125. 125. All right, man. I had a good night, dude. Shout out Mushroom, too. I just see Mushroom's name again. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. All right, kids. We're taking off. There it is. Oh, yeah. We're not going to be, we're not going to go live this Friday, just so you guys know. We're going to take a little bit of a, a week off and we're going to be back the Friday before UFC 300 with a couple special guests. So yeah. this Friday, gonna... no live show. Yeah, the schedule suck. Um, hopefully, here in the next, you know, soon we'll be getting back to doing the the Saturday pre shows. Yes, and um, that'll be a lot better because it's hard, man, to get people on on Friday nights and do all that stuff. It's just, it's. I mean, we get it. It makes perfect sense. So, till yep. then, um, yeah, we will do these big old pay per view shows, and if there's some other big cards, maybe we'll hop on and stuff. But yeah, like, this card is not worthy. No, <laughs> not I don't want to break down Damon. I've already. I don't want to break down Damon Jackson. Once is enough for me. <laughs> Fernandez, Cobain again. All right, kids, take care. Like and subscribe on your way out, and follow us on Twitter. All that good stuff. Take care. Good luck with your bets. Yep. See you guys. Good luck.